Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if neglected Naruto gets a bloodline from Kami. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by MIKEJV37 link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. This is the one and only time I will mention this so heads up. 1. I do not own Naruto, no matter how much I wish I did, and had been a day like any other for him, scrounge for scraps, steal a piece of fruit from a stand and eat it before they caught him, spend most of the day hiding in alleys and three or four times a week get attacked and beaten unconscious by an angry mob and hope you wake up. It was sunset when they caught him and for the five-year-old blonde boy curled into a tight ball in the dark alley getting stomped bloody by adults who hated him for some reason he couldn't understand or figure out, it was just another day. He screamed, cried and begged for mercy, but as usual all that did was anger them more. He just couldn't figure out why they hated him or called him monster and demon. When the darkness overtook him this time, it was different. He knew he was unconscious, but was still awake and now seemed to be falling, then suddenly found himself in a very dirty sewer with a couple inches of water. Naruto stood and looked around a minute before he realized he wasn't in pain. Am I dead did they kill me this time? Naruto said then shuddered when an inhumanly deep laugh echoed through the sewer. Come to me boy, we must speak. A terrifying voice said. The voice terrified him, but despite his fear he followed it down the long tunnel around the corner and down another long tunnel to a huge room, at the far side was the most massive cage door he'd ever seen, even the main gate of the village was tiny compared to it. Wh where am I and who are you? Little Naruto said nervously but bravely. Just because he ran from the villagers didn't mean he was afraid of them, he just couldn't fight back, he was too small and weak. A pair of huge red eyes appeared in the darkness of the cage. We are inside your mind boy, and I am Kaiubi no Kitsune, greatest of all the tailed beasts and lord of hell. Kaiubi roared powerfully. And I am the reason they hate you, but I'm also going to help you. Naruto stood there filled with sadness and a quickly building rage he never felt before. He was about to scream at the unseen thing in the cage when it said it was going to help him that got his attention as only one person had ever helped him, the old man in the big tower. If everyone hates me cause of you then why do you want to help me? Naruto said as he tried to look tough. For such a small kid you have big balls to stand up to me like that and you don't even really know who I am. Kaiubi said actually impressed. You're too young to understand this now, but basically, if you die, I die and I refuse to die sealed inside some undersized kit. So I'm going to give you power you never know Kaiubi. A female voice interrupted. I will not allow you to alter his fate to fit your evil desires. Kaiubi flinched and looked past Naruto, who spun around when he heard her voice. What are you doing here you bit? Silence. The woman yelled, which humbled Kaiubi. Do not speak to me that way beast, even your power is nothing compared to mine. The woman said and walked gracefully to the stunned Naruto. She was six feet tall, had white hair past her waist and a silver kimono that showed a beautiful figure and large breasts. She smiled warmly at Naruto who relaxed and smiled back. Naruto-kun, I wish I didn't have to do this, but Kaiubi is correct. Your fate has somehow been changed and the people attacking you are going to kill you. This wasn't supposed to happen. Well I don't agree with his method, someone must intervene, I shall do so. One of your greatest abilities is your luck, but that seems to have been negated. I have many names, but many humans refer to me as Lady Luck, this is what you may call me. For your life to turn out as close to how it should I must give you a gift no mortal has ever had the golden kiss. You will not remember this for many years as anything more than a good feeling. You will have good luck beyond any mortal, I can't tell you any more I'm afraid, I must act now before it is too late. She said in a beautiful motherly voice, then kneeled down and kissed Naruto gently on the forehead before she vanished. Ayubi watched her and Naruto vanish, then started to laugh, this isn't what he planned, but if she did what he thought she just did this would be even more fun to watch than the slaughter of millions, and for him that was something special. The real world, as they kicked Naruto in an effort to kill him and his demon before the Anbu showed up, three stories up in a window ledge above the two-story building across the alley, the woman tripped, bumped the vase, and sent it plummeting straight down, where it shattered on the head on the mob's leader and knocked him cold. Thinking they'd been spotted by someone they scattered and left the man face down in the alley with a concussion and blood pouring from a wound on top his head. Just after they scattered three Anbu appeared, the leader a tall thin man with spiky silver hair above his mask. The other was a more muscular man with black hair and a shorter woman with large but well-proportioned breasts for her build and long purple hair. Benham, um, take that garbage to Anbu headquarters and tell Ibiki to have fun with him, I'll take Naruto back to his apartment, have Hokage-sama's personal doctor meet us there and stand guard until morning. The silver-haired man said from behind his wolf mask. The purple-haired woman smiled sadistically behind her snake mask and threw the unconscious bloody man over her shoulder. Though only temporary, she loved being an Anbu guard for this kid, it gave her a chance to hurt people legally. 
She didn't really like the little blonde kid, but she'd seen how shitty his life was the last month she'd been assigned to guard him, but did have some respect for him, because no matter what he never gave up, she could relate to that, her life until recently had been just as shitty. I can understand hating what's inside the kid, but even I'm not sadistic enough to kill a little kid for something he has no control over, and those fuckers at the hospital Venom said, her anger and voice raising with every word. Calm down Venom I know how you feel, but even we can't just kill people without good reason, and you know it. We have a job to do dismissed. Wolf said. Venom nodded and vanished. You know what will happen if she ever catches anyone attacking the kid, I doubt even we'll be able to stop her from killing them. The big man in the bear mask said seriously. The thin man in the wolf mash sighed, nodded, scooped up Naruto and vanished with bear. Naruto's mindscape, so the snake bitch has a soft spot for the kid I can use that. If Kami and her other celestial bitches are watching over the kid they'll seal me away in the back of his mind if I try to influence him the wrong way and I won't even be able to talk to him. They want him to be a hero, fine, but it'll be my way. Kaiubi said and smiled broadly. Naruto, age 6, 6.57 am, the academy. Naruto walked down the hall of the academy towards his first class. He didn't show it, but he was really nervous, despite what the old man and his new friends at the Raymond stand said, being around all these people, and especially the ninja teachers made him nervous, he saw the all too familiar hate in every adult's eyes he'd met so far, unlike with villagers, if they decided to kill him there was was nothing he could do even running wouldn't help him against them. He paused at the doorway and looked in at all the other kids. Most of them he'd seen around the village and recognized, especially the kids from the big clans. There's the fat kid with the chips, the lazy kid the bug kid seems okay, but creepy there's dog boy there Mr. Important, pinky nnd big mouth. I don't why they like him, just because he's from a big clan and he's rich he thinks he's special big jerk. Naruto thought, then his scowl fell away when he ow and girl with blue hair and wide eyes looking at him, he didn't think anyone in there had seen him. She suddenly turned red and looked down at her desk. She's weird I wonder who she is, I think she's one of those I people, but why haven't I ever seen her before. Oh well, I better get in there and get a seat, I promised grandpa I'd try to behave. Naruto Thout then walked in, crossed the room and got a seat right in the middle of everyone he recognized. This was lucky maybe I'll get to play cards with some of them later, good thing I brought the deck grandpa bought me. Naruto thought and smiled, he'd found out a couple months ago he was really lucky with cards, dice, any game he played or little bet he made, usually for Raymond, he always won even against the old guy he called grandpa. A minute or so later the bell rang and a guy with a big scar across his nose came in and smiled. I'm your teacher, you can call Iruka sensei Before we start let's see who's here. Iruka said, went to his desk, picked up the clipboard of names and a pencil. Chaoji Akamichi. Munch munch here. Shino Aburami. Iruka said, then smirked subtly when Shino just raised a hand enough to see. Just like his dad. Iruka thought. Naruto listened and watched his names were called, he wanted to see whoever I was. Eventually everyone he recognized was named but one. Here. Naruto yelled and waved his arm so everyone saw him. Most laughed, he could tell some thought he was an idiot, but he didn't care about that, or even that many of them looked at him like the adults did, but not with as much hate as they did. He looked at the last person and smiled at her. Ino Yamanaka. Iruka said. You're next to Sasu Kun. Ino said sweetly. Naruto felt the strong, for their age anyway, killer intent that filled the classroom when Ino said that, he looked around at all the angry girls and almost felt sorry for Ino almost, but not quite, then froze when he saw her. The girl he now knew as Hinata Hayuga wasn't staring all big-eyed at Sasuke but at him. That is, until he saw her staring at him, turned bright red and face planted on her desk with a thud. He had to giggle at that, she was funny weird, but funny. He made a mental note to talk to her later, maybe she wanted to be friends and was just too shy. Grandpa had given him a few talks about people, so he had a tiny idea of why she acted like that. In Naruto's mind, unheard by him, Kaiubi was laughing his furry butt off. He knew exactly why the girl looked at him like that. He could have introduced himself to Naruto and told him, but where was the fun in that? That Sasu kid Kaiubi had plans for him, if there was one thing he enjoyed it was knocking the arrogant off their throne and leaving them humiliated. He was glad he influenced Naruto enough to get him to practice throwing things, mostly rocks, but with his luck the kid never missed his target. He couldn't wait for the weapons. Minus 12.42 pm, 5th period weapon class, outdoor target range. Naruto had watched everyone take their turn and throw the kunai, most were decent enough, but as he figured Sasuke was currently ranked top in the class with a near-perfect score of 95, which made all the girls but Hinata fawn all over him and he'd ignore them as usual. He could at least be nice to them jerk. Naruto thought, then smiled a little bigger than he already was when his turn came. He stepped up to the table to pick up five of the ten kunai he had to throw. At least try to hit the target dobe if you can see over the table that is. Sasuke said and laughed cruelly. 
Naruto felt a familiar rush of energy through his body that always started in his stomach, which he figured was where everyone's chakra started when they used it. He was about to pick one up when Inyudia appeared in his mind. Hiruka-sensei, do we have to throw at the first targets, they're only 30 feet away. Naruto said and looked depressed, like he was doing something too easy. Then I throw at the second targets. Everyone got quiet and looked at the little blonde like he was crazy. Naruto, the other targets are 60 feet away and are for the advanced students, you can't reach them yet. Hiruka said calmly. Yeah dope, I've been training since I was two, and I can't hit those yet, so there's no way a runt like you could do it. Sasuke said and laughed with most of the other students. Naruto quietly smacked his lips together as he always did, and smiled big as he said his hook. Sure I can do it all the time. Iruka raised his eyebrows slightly at this, he'd heard students boast before, but this time was different somehow, he actually believed Naruto could do it. Naruto, can you really hit those targets from here? Iruka asked calm but very curious, no one had ever hit those targets on their first day, not even Itachi Acha. Of course I can Iruka sensei Naruto said confidently. No chance dope, you have a better chance of getting these girls to kiss you than hitting those targets. Sasuke said. Yeah. All but one girl yelled confidently. Oh yeah, then how about we bet on it? Naruto said seriously. All the girls suddenly got quiet, they didn't like that look on the little blonde boy's face, it made them all nervous for some reason. What's the bet dope? Sasuke said as he got serious. Iruka got the same odd feeling the girls had in his stomach, but he'd seen that look before in casinos, it was the look of someone that knew they were going to win no matter what. Before I allow this, what are the terms of the bet? He has to hit all 10 targets for at least one point. Sasuke said. If he doesn't. Iruka asked. Sasuke thought a moment then smiled cruelly. For the next month he has to call me Sasuke-sama and do anything I tell him at the academy. What do you say Naruto? Iruka said. Deal. If I win you have to do that for me, and if I get a bullseye on all ten every girl here has to kiss me. Naruto exclaimed. He wasn't interested in girls that way yet, he just knew they didn't want to, and that was a good enough to make them do it. Every girl there went pale, several fainted including Hinata. Iruka's eyebrows shot up at that. Girls you don't have to, we accept, my Sasuke-kun won't lose. Ino said when her confidence came back. Sasuke looked around and saw a small nod from all of them still conscious. They all annoyed him, but they helped his image as the soon-to-be top student. Deal. Sasuke said and walked over to Naruto. Iruka stopped Sasuke and waited a moment while he had a few girls wake up the few that fainted. Does everyone agree to the terms of the bet? As shinobi your word is everything, it will define how other shinobi treat you, and among your teammates if they can't trust you, then you won't live long. Everyone understand that. Iruka said seriously, then saw everyone nod. Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke Chicha, shake hands and make this a binding agreement. He watched them shake then step back. Naruto looked at the big outdoor clock. Since class will be over soon I'll do this fast. Naruto said with a big smile, scooped up five kunai in each hand by the handles, crossed his arms over his chest, and with a grunt threw all ten at once, his arms snapped out to his sides. Everyone went slack-jawed and bug-eyed when all ten kunai hit their targets dead center. So who's first? Naruto asked as he licked his lips. Okage Tower, 3.16 pm, Saratobi's pipe fell from his mouth to the desk when his jaw dropped from shock. He did what? Saratobi yelled with cage-level power. Iruka flinched. It's true Hokage-sama, Naruto Uzumaki hit all 10 targets dead center at the same time on his first throw. I've never seen anything like it, even from experienced Anbu, but Aruka said and hesitated. Saratobi caught that and compassed himself. But what Aruka? It wasn't skill, he didn't even aim, he just threw them, and I think I felt some of its chakra when he did, but I'm pretty sure all it did was enhance his strength so he could hit them, the rest was all Naruto. I watched him the rest of the day when I had him and notified his other teachers they all said the same thing, he has the most unbelievable luck we've ever seen, there's one more thing Hokage-sama it's Mizuki, he wants a transfer to another department, he'll take anything as long as it's away from Naruto. Saratobi's right eyebrow raised slightly. Why, what happened in his Tejutsu class? You know how proud he is well, by the time his class started word had spread all over the academy. Mizuki got into an argument with Naruto, and they ended making a bet that Naruto couldn't hit him, and no matter how good Naruto was at throwing things that wouldn't save him in a fight. Iruka said and swallowed nervously. Naruto has the worst, sloppiest adjusto style I've ever seen in my life, it's like he taught himself. They went at it a minute, I will say this for Naruto, he has incredible reflexes, it's like he knew the addicts were coming he got him. Mizuki hit him. Saratobi said, slightly concerned. Iruka shook his head. I don't know how, but Naruto landed a kick and knocked him out cold. Saratobi was stunned. Impossible wait, where did Naruto kick him that could knock Mizuki out? Iruka winced. Naruto kicked him in the balls, he's at the hospital now. 
I don't know if he was seriously injured, but based on my experience, to knock out someone like Mizuki with a single kick requires incredible chakra to generate the force needed. It reminded me of stories you used to tell me about, Tsunade. Suratobi interrupted. Thank you dismissed. Suratobi said, waited for Aruka to leave, put a sound seal on the room and burst out laughing. He was one of the few people aware of how Mizuki really felt about Naruto, he saw him as Kyubi reborn, not as a person that contained the demon lord. End chapter 1, A2, 7 AM, The Academy, Naruto sat at his desk with a big smile on his face. When he got there that morning everyone looked at him, many kids even respectfully stepped aside, even older kids. The look everyone gave him wasn't the same hate he was used to he wasn't sure what it was, but he liked it. He was the center of attention, but for a different reason this time. Dissing all the girls yesterday had been fun, most didn't like it, some didn't seem to care, and few seemed to like it afterwards one girl stood out though, Hinata Hayuga. She was last in line to kiss him, she'd fainted four times trying to kiss him, and finally did with Aruka sensei holding her up, then fainted again. He thought it was really funny, but for some reason couldn't bring himself to laugh at her, it was like someone was holding him back. When Aruka sensei came and he saw him immediately look right at him and smile. Aruka picked up his clipboard and stood in front of his desk. Everyone, we have a new student. She should have started last year but was unable to for personal reasons please come in. Iruka said as he turned to the door and waited a moment for her to enter. Everyone, please say hello to Tenten. Naruto watched her enter, and when she did his eyes bugged out. Naruto was the smallest kid in his grade, but the new girl, Tenten, was even shorter than he was, and she was a year older. She had black hair and little buns on the sides of her head, a dark blue shirt, black pants and sandals. She looked around then when she saw him she seemed to get angry at him, he had no idea why though, he just met her. Tenten, please take a seat. Iruka said. Tenten gave Iruka a polite bow and headed for the only empty seat, but all the way there she glared at the little blonde boy with the three marks on each cheek. Lunch, Academy Cafeteria, here's your Raymond from Ichiraku's Naruto-sama. Sasuke said politely as he sat the one-quart white box in front of Naruto, but it was obvious he was really mad. May I eat lunch now Naruto-sama? Sasuke said politely through clenched teeth. Naruto laughed. Thanks Sasuke team dismissed. Naruto said casually and with at his hand, he'd seen the old man do that a lot and practiced imitating him until he did it perfectly. Sasuke gave Naruto a forced polite bow and walked away. He gritted his teeth angrily as he heard Naruto laughing behind him. He wanted to use his fireball jutsu on Naruto, but he didn't, not because of the academy, but dot because of his parents. His father could only kill him for breaking his word as a shinobi, and in Ichiha his mother would do far worse, he'd get the look from her, that glare of total disappointment, he simply couldn't withstand it, and once even saw his father humbled by an almost identical glare. He figured it had to be some special jutsu they teach women at the academy, because only women in Kinoichi ever used it. Naruto had just dug into his ramen when two chopsticks pierced the box. Everyone froze and turned to look, Naruto had a mouthful of noodles, half which hung out of his mouth. Fifty feet away, on the other side of the cafeteria, stood a very angry little brunette, her right arm still extended from her throne Naruto, slurped down his ramen and swallowed them with an audible gulp as he watched her storm across the room to him. That lunch period was used by all the grades, and as Tenton crossed even the final year students twice her size stepped out of her way. No one noticed the on-duty Kanoichi shushing away or return just before Tenton reached Naruto, she had a guest that stood behind her hidden from the students, he rubbed his scarred nose. Hello um Tenton is something wrong? Naruto said nervously and gave her a big friendly smile. You think you're better than me with kunai? Tenten asked angrily. Naruto thought a moment, shrugged, and said what he hoped is the right thing. Maybe I've never seen you use them. You will today whip in class, the target range, I challenge you to a contest to decide once and for all who has the best aim. Tenten said loudly, grabbed Naruto's chopsticks from him, twirled them at high speed in her right hand, and without even looking through them, both pierced the center of a chunk of barback pork chowji had in his chopsticks ready to bite, he was 35 feet away. Tenten turned and stormed out of the cafeteria. I'm going to have to assign him a bodyguard if this keeps up. Haruka said as he gently shook his head, then vanished. And I thought doing him this favor was going to be boring. Anko whispered to herself behind her hinge and smiled. Weapon class, outdoor target range. As he listened to Aruka sensei ask Tenten if she was sure she wanted to bet on this, he thought about what had happened. He'd heard a very quiet voice in his head lately that had given him these ideas for the bets and other things, but he thought it was normal. Besides, everything had gone his way and now he'd just found out that Tenten's dad owned the best weapon shop in Kanoha, his little voice had suggested that be the bet, and Tenten had agreed right away. I'm ready Aruka sensei, so who goes first? Since standard targets won't settle this, you see I have 10 small targets set up around the field, you'll both get 10 kunai. 
you'll get one minute to run the course I laid out, since you made the challenge Tenten. I let Naruto decide who goes first. Iruka said then looked at Naruto. Okay Tenten can go first. Naruto said. Iruka subtly raised his eyebrows when Naruto said okay, as if someone had said something to him. He had a feeling he knew who it was. As long as he didn't see any red chakra he'd let anything Naruto said or did slide, as long as no one was in danger and it wasn't trying to escape. Ready Tenten Iruka took out a stopwatch. Go. He said as he clicked it. He watched her dash through the course at impressive speed for her size and age, and she threw her kunai with a very practiced hand, which didn't surprise him considering who her parents were. He clicked it as she crossed the line. 42.34 seconds, very impressive Tenten. Hiruka said, then walked the course, removed her kunai and recorded her score. Um, looks like you scored a 9.9 .9 Tenten, your last hit was a millimeter to the left. The wind blew the target, I was dead center that's not fair. Tenten yelled. Iruka could hear it in her voice, she scored better than most high-level Chunin, and she was actually disgusted with her performance. She's a perfectionist. Her file was right, her whole identity is wrapped up in her near-perfect natural lane with thrown weapons. If Naruto beats her I hope it doesn't break her spirit, she'll make an excellent Kinoichi and weapon mistress someday. Iruka thought. Sorry Tenten, your turn Naruto. Iruka said, and as Naruto picked up the ten kunai he felt that same subtle chakra surge he felt yesterday. If Naruto is the kind of person I think he is, if he does hurt her feelings, he'll make it up to her some way I hope. Hiruka thought. Naruto got his kunai ready. Go. Oh. Hiruka said as he clicked the stopwatch watched carefully as Naruto ran the course at full speed, he didn't even look at the targets, he just threw his kunai as he passed them, and like before he didn't aim, but hit the target on pure luck, it was like a bloodline limit almost, he couldn't believe it even as he watched it happen. He checked his watch and knew he had her time beat easily. When Naruto crossed the line he stopped it. 30 seconds even. I'll be right back. Hiruka said and ran off to check his aim and collect the kunai. When he got to the last target he knew it was over before he even got close like the first nine, this one was dead enter, in fact the FRST9 were in the same hole made by Tenten's kunai. He compassed himself and returned to the anxious kids, two in particular. Naruto's score was perfect. He said almost nervously. The instant he started to say perfect he saw Tenten's face, behind her eyes her self-worth was falling like a lightning bolt from the sky. I lost Tent and whimpered pathetically as her eyes teared up, Iruka watched intently, he saw her emotional mask was about to shatter, but before he could act it happened. Tenten froze up, her whole body stiff. Don't cry Tenten, you're way better than me, I just got lucky. Naruto said as he hugged her. You like Raymond. After academy I'll take you out to eat all you want and I'll call us even, what do you say? Sasuke team is buying. Naruto said happily, then for a reason even he didn't understand, he kissed her cheek. Near the front, Hinata silently whimpered when she saw him kiss her, but it had been on her cheek, not on the lips. She still had hope. Sasu clenched his fists and jaw, but didn't react otherwise. Denton was stunned, she just stood there a moment and stared at him. I love Raymond uh, thank you Naruto-kun. Tenten said almost timidly, when he'd kissed her all her pain had faded away almost instantly and been replaced by something else that made her all happy. She whipped around facing the crowd. From now on anyone tries to pick on Naruto-kun has to go through me first. Tenten exclaimed. Well I'll be damned how the hell did he do that. Iruka thought, highly amused, but kept it hidden. Naruto-kun, after we eat I'll take you to our family shop to get your new weapons, I hope dad lets me anyway. Tenten said as she realized she'd bet him free weapons from her dad's shop without permission. Sure Tenten-chan. Naruto said happily, then turned to the crowd when he heard an almost squeaky voice. He looked around and saw her face was all red. Does you say something Hinata-chan? Naruto said casually, not really realizing he'd called her Chan accidentally. Hinata's head snapped up and her face turned bright red. He called me Hinata-chan. Hinata said to herself, then nodded her answer to him purely on instinct. CCCC can I JJ join you for RR Ram men? Hinata stuttered out badly, she'd never been so nervous in her entire life. Naruto smiled happily, he'd just made two friends in one day. Of course you can Hinata-chan. Naruto exclaimed. Iruka glanced at Hinata and saw it in her eyes. She loves him, she's just too shy to tell him uh oh, if Naruto hugs Hinata, her blood pressure might kill her. Iruka thought. Everyone back inside, except you Naruto you're going to help me clean up. Iruka said. Naruto whined and pouted a moment, then nodded. Hi, Iruka sensei Can I stay and help Naruto-kun clean up? Tenten said hopefully. I think we can handle it Tenten, but you can take the kunai back in and put them away for me, I know I can trust you with school property. With the extras there's too many for one person, hm Hinata, would you assist Tenten please? Hiruka said. Hinata calmed down and bowed slightly. Hi, Hiruka sensei Hinata smiled at Tenten, then quickly helped Tenten load the kunai into the box with the others and carry it inside. 
that should get them talking, if she'd just open up Hinata could be a top student. She lacks confidence Tenten doesn't, and both need friends. Now I just need to have a little talk with Naruto. Hiroka thought. Minus 2.20 pm, Ichiraku Raymond. So that's X beef Raymond for you Naruto-kun, a pork Raymond for you Tenten-chan, and a Maizo Raymond for you Hinata-chan. The 16-year-old girl said and gave Naruto a sly smirk, then turned and headed for the stove. So why haven't you brought your girlfriends in sooner Naruto-kun? AM said playfully, then heard a thud and turned suddenly back to them and gasped. Naruto was looking at the floor surprised, Tenten was bright red, and she couldn't see Hinata. She ran back to the counter and looked down over it Hinata was on the floor out cold, her face neon red. Oh Kami I'm sorry. AM said and ran around to help Hinata as her father came out of the back. Naruto age 8, 2.38 pm, Ichiraku Raymond. Sakura Haruno sat on the stool next to her friend trying to become invisible. The Sakura's left sat an angry Ino Yamanaka. I still can't believe you did this to me forehead, how could you make that bet with Naruto you ruined my reputation. Look at us. Ino almost yelled, jumped off her stool and did a spin. Thanks to you we have to wear these ugly orange jumpsuits for a week. Sasuke-kun will never look at me again, and you Ino said, and Fed shook her head and got back on her stool. I Ino I really didn't think he knew the answer. Sakura said meekly, she hoped she hadn't lost her best friend. Hinata sat quietly at her normal stool on Naruto's right and ate her Maizo ramen, but inside she was laughing her head off. She didn't see what the problem was though, she thought orange was a good color, especially on her best boyfriend and crush Naruto. She glanced over at Tenten who was giggling almost out of control. The now 9-year-old Tenten didn't see what the big deal was, she thought they looked good in orange jumpsuits, Naruto did. She was barely able to eat her pork cream and she was giggling so hard. Minus 11.56 p.m., that night, Naruto's apartment. Naruto threw off his ragged, worn blanket and got out of bed in his orange pajamas and scratched his head. Stupid cat up screeching all night. Naruto said annoyed, reached between the headboard of his bed and the wall into a hole and pulled out an old, slightly rusty, but recently sharpened kunai. He had new ones from Tenten, but this was his first one and his favorite. This time I'm gonna kill that stupid cat. Naruto said with a big, slightly dark foxy grin. Had he looked at the side of the kunai he'd have seen his eyes turn red for just a moment as he said it. Naruto went to his window, deactivated the alarm he'd recently made for it to keep people from breaking in to trash everything yet again, checked to be sure the coast was clear, then climbed out, kunai in hand. He chased it dozens of times during the last six months and memorized its patterns and hiding places. He snuck silently through the alley and down the side streets, from its singing he knew where it was and had a plan. He'd use what he'd learned at the academy and sneak up it from behind. He tried the direct attack a dozen times after it had first appeared, but as fast as he was that stupid grey cat was faster. Okay Tora, this time I got ya, and you won't Naruto thought as he crossed the rooftop to the edge for he death from above attack, then stopped when he saw something unusual. He was used to seeing the occasional Anbu blurring across the rooftops, or a shinobi out on the street patrolling, but this person sneaking through the shadows, had a big bag over his shoulder, and it had an odd shape to it, then he saw it move. He's kidnapping someone. Naruto thought, then for some reason the direction the man came from bot hurt him, so he turned and looked. It only took him a moment to realize who lived in that direction that was worth kidnapping. He has Hinata-chan. Naruto whispered, unaware his voice had changed or his eyes had turned blood red and now had vertical slit pupils. Over 200 yards away the lining nin stopped mid-step when he felt it, a sudden spike of chaka filled with more raw hatred than even he could imagine, he turned and scanned the area nervously. No human has chakra that stronger has that much hatred, it has to be a Jinchuriki damn it, why didn't they tell me Kanoha had a Jinchuriki? I better get the fuck out of he thought, then dropped the sack and screamed in a very high-pitched voice. It had come in faster than even he could react as a jounin and buried itself in his crotch. He fell to the ground wailing, unable to even focus enough to use his chakra. In the 20 years he'd been a ninja, he'd been injured many times, but never had he been struck there by a weapon. The next thing he knew Smeon grabbed his collar and lifted him up to his knees where he looked into the slitted, blood-red eyes of a little blonde boy who had his fist raised to strike, red chakra was gathering around his fist almost like armor as it slowly covered his body. He caught a glimpse behind the obviously enraged Inchuriki and saw a fox tail forming out of red chakra. He instantly knew which demon was imprisoned in the blonde boy. Kaiubi no Kitsune he said now terrified. He could handle most shinobi, even Jounin, but Kaiubi was so far beyond him he knew anything he tried would be useless. I'm glad I haven't been forgotten Kaiubi said through Naruto, who he'd surfaced to keep these memories from him for now. Now mortal scum you will burn in the fires of hell. Kaiubi said as his raised fist burst into red flames. Release him Kaiubi-sama let us handle this. A voice said from behind Kaiubi, calmly, but slyly nervous. 
still in control, Kaiubi threw the Lining Nin face down on the street, hard enough to knock him out and turned around, still in his one tail chakra cloak. He saw six Anbu, the three now unmasked Anbu from three years ago in the alley, and the Hayuga twins, Hiashi and his Ashi, who kept looking past him to the still unconscious Hinata, whose head and right arm now hung out of the sack, their Byakugan active. Ayubi was very angry, but still in control, he didn't want to, but he had to give Naruto control back, he didn't want another visit from her worse. Naruto is unaware of my presence within him for now you will keep it that way. Tell him of me before he's ready and I'll skin you all alive. Kaiubi said menacingly, he didn't want them to know he was bluffing. He then pulled back all his chakra and Naruto returned to normal. The moment he did, Naruto fell forward, unconscious. Bakashi crossed the ten feet in an instant and caught him. Hiashi, Hizashi, take Hinata home. Anko, Asuma take him to Ibiki. You six take Naruto home and stand guard out of sight I'll report this to Hokage-sama. If anyone asks, this is an S-rank secret for now dismissed. Kakashi said, handed Naruto to the Anbu, then he vanished in a swirl of wind and leaves. The Ashi picked up Hinata, and now except for his brother, they were the only ones still there. That was the diplomat from Cloud. He Ashi said. His Ashi sighed and nodded. Hi. I also noticed that wasn't the same Kaiubi that attacked us six years ago he was protecting Hinata. The Ashi nodded. That's twice I owe him now his Ashi. First I allow him to visit Hinata, and he trips a branch member bringing Han a poison tea that would have killed her, and now he saved my daughter, thanks to the demon I must admit I was wrong about them, especially Naruto, and have dishonored my friend's memory. I will make this up to his son no matter the personal cost. The Ashi said quietly to his twin, then ran off towards the Hyuga compound, a thousand thoughts ran through his mind all at once at what just happened, and what he was going to tell Hinata tomorrow, and what he was going to tell Hana when he got back, his Ashi was close behind him. Then Chapter 2, Naruto Age 8, 4.31pm, Hyuga Compound Since he'd helped save Hinata-chan two months ago, he still had no idea how though and any adult he asked would say, I'll tell you when you're older, he didn't like it, but as long as Hinata-chan was okay he didn't care. As he sat and watched Hinata spar with Niji in the outdoor training ground he had to smile. Hinata was the top Kanoichi at the academy, she hadn't stuttered in almost three weeks, he'd made friends with Sasuke, though they were also rivals now he loved finally having someone to train with now. He had dozens of friends now, at least at the academy, and the adult ninjas and Kinoichi would give him a friendly smile, not a wave, when he saw them around the village, most of the villagers still glared hatefully at him for some reason he still couldn't figure out, but some had changed their minds. Better than everything else though, was that Hinata's dad and uncle had bought him a small house near the Hyuga compound. It wasn't much bigger than his apartment, but it was clean and it is all his, no rent to pay. He didn't get money from the old man anymore, but they'd solved that too, he had a bank account now that if he was careful like they showed him, would last him until he graduated and could earn his own money. They said it was the least they could do for him for saving Hinata. All he knew was that if it wasn't for him that man would have escaped with Hinata and they never would have seen her again. Hum on Naruto, you must be washed and dressed if you wish to join us for dinner. Hiashi said as he walked up to Naruto. Naruto turned to him and smiled. Hi, Hiashi-sama. Naruto said, hopped off the bench bowed and dashed off to the men's baths in the main house. The Ashi smiled as he smelled lilacs from behind him and turned around. Hello Hana-chan, how's Lil Hanabi-chan? Hana smiled warmly at her husband as she held her sleeping three-year-old daughter on her shoulder. She fell asleep watching Hinata-chan spar with Niji, she said she was really proud her Ni-chan was so strong now, before she went out she was tired from her training I guess, she wants to be just like Hinata when she grows up. Anna said with a warm smile, then activated her Byakugan a moment to be sure Naruto or any other kids weren't around to hear her, her face got serious, which for her was rare inside the compound. Has he shown up since Hinata-chan's kidnapping attempt? The Ashi's face changed to the familiar emotionless appearance. I've watched him here and had him watched by our Jounin, even when he gets hit sparring with the Achiha, there's been nothing. I've discussed this with Saratobi-sama and the other clan heads we all agree, for whatever reason we're unaware of, it has changed. Even when he threatened us that night, he was full of rage, but there was no hatred or evil intent when he said it. Anna smiled and relaxed. And what about this uncanny luck he has, I've never seen anything like it. I've watched him, it isn't just throwing things, it happens in any game he plays, or anything he wants to do, he seems to almost there's no other way to say it, he seems to change fate to whatever outcome is best for him, but I don't think he's aware that he's doing it, he just thinks he's really lucky. The Ashi nodded, then smirked. Have you heard about his dream? Uh no, I haven't spent as much time with him as I'd like because of Hanabi-chan, but she'll be playing with other kids soon. Hannah said. 
He wants to be the next Hokage said, then he saw a twinkle in his wife's eyes he hadn't seen in a long time and sighed. Aman Hiyashi kun you know Hinata loves him, and we both know with his luck he will be Hokage someday, they'd be a perfect couple, not to mention what having our son-in-law as Hokage would do for the clan. Hannah said happily and gave him her best pleading expression, leaned forward slightly, so her kimono top fell open enough to let him see of her very large breasts. It was a dirty trick to use this outside the bedroom, where she'd have to pay him back tonight, but it was worth it. The ashy held his ground until he saw down her kimono, he just couldn't resist those big pale breasts. You win Hannah, I'll draw up the paperwork later and take it to Siratobi sama tomorrow. He ashy said and thought a moment. They'd be honored to know you want their son to marry Hinata, I miss them too. Anna smiled, kissed Hiyashi, then called over her personal servant, an older cadet branch woman, and handed Hanabi to her. Please put Hanabi to bed, she won't be joining us for dinner. Be sure Naruto-kun is ready and in the dining room by five sharp this time. Hannah said with a subtle smirk, then nodded to the woman. The woman took Hanabi, smiled subtly, then nodded and left. Naruto aged nine, after sunset. Naruto loved night, he could go out and explore Konoha without having to deal with any people, except the odd shinobi he'd meet on patroller Anbu, though they never stopped to even say hello with one exception. It had started ten months ago by accident, but had become a regular event, once a week he'd go there just after sunset. He landed on the roof. Listened carefully and waited for the very subtle sound. He suddenly spun around, caught the kunai that had been thrown at him and smiled happily. All the special training he'd gotten in the last year, especially from his new surrogate dad and uncle, had increased his power by leaps and bounds, though he hid most of what he could do now at the academy. The Anbu stepped out of the shadows and lifted her mask. Damn it brat how the hell do you do that? You aren't even a genin yet, but not only can you detect me when no one else can, but you can catch my kunai barehanded. She said annoyed but very impressed. He'd mastered everything she'd taught him in the last 10 months in a matter of days. She knew how lucky he was, but in four years, the last in particular, he'd gotten as strong as she was, maybe more. It has to be the fox's doing, there's no other explanation for why he's so damn strong. That's a secret Anko-chan you know we don't tell our secrets. You lost a game I'm waiting. Naruto said and gave her a big almost perverted grin. Anko pouted very Naruto-like. Oh come on brat how the hell you ever got me to make that damn bed is beyond me, but Anko Midorahi always pays her debts, you sure you're a nine-year-old kid and not Kakashi using a disguise? That pervert would do anything to see what you're about to again. Anko said slightly embarrassed but amused. Naruto smiled and shook his head. You're the only Anbu I talked to Anko-chan. I heard a scream, like someone was stabbed or something. Naruto said seriously as he turned his head side to side to find the direction. I didn't hear anything, but I trust your senses you've never been wrong before. Anko said as she reached for her Anbu communicator. Before I call in an Anbu strike, show me where it came from. I'm in charge, but you have the better senses let's move Naruto. Anko said, put her mask back on and leapt off the roof after Naruto. As she followed him around she quickly realized where they always ended up near. It's Sasuke's family. Naruto said shakily. I can hear him inside someone is killing everyone in there. He's a jerk, but he's still my friend, and nobody is gonna hurt my friends. Naruto said fiercely then jumped up onto and over the wall around the Ichiha compound. Am did Naruto wait for fucking hothead? Anko switched on her communicator. This is Venom, Code Red 2, Ichiha compound. Anko said quickly but clearly and followed Naruto over the wall to help. Minus two minutes later, Ichiha compound. Naruto ran through the halls toward the main bedrooms where Sasuke and his parents were. If he hadn't been here a few times already he'd have gotten lost trying to find everyone. He'd already found the Ichiha elders and many of their janin that made up the Kanoha police force all of them dead. It made him sick to see it, they weren't just killed, they were slaughtered like animals, many had been decapitated or split open. He heard screaming and recognized it as Makoto, Sasuke's mother. Makoto kneeled on the floor as she hugged the unconscious Asuke protectively, tears poured from her Sharingan eyes. She was a Jounin, but knew fighting was useless, her husband was far stronger than her, and the man before her had decapitated him easily, and now stood over her, his bloody sword raised. Why Itachi-kun? Makoto said softly, with extreme sadness and confusion, then closed her eyes and waited for the deep blow then there was a crash, and the sound of wood shattering, and a wave of chakra hit her so filled with rage and power, it knocked her out. Minus one minute later, Anko jumped through the hole in the wall she knew had to be from Naruto, a kunai in each hand, just in time to see a face she hoped she'd never have to again, and was instantly filled with near-blinding rage. Orochimaru. Anko screamed with every ounce of rage she'd held in for years. Orochimaru smiled very snake-like at Anko as he pulled a kunai from his shoulder. Another time anko chan will see you again boy, you are most interesting. Orochimaru said then melted into the ground before Anko's kunai struck the ground moments before her fists. Hucking snake bastard I'll kill you. Anko roared in rage as she lunged at him after she threw her kunai. 
That was the moment 20 Anbu, lead by Kakashi and Asuma, appeared in the room. They saw six people, an enraged Anko on her knees punching the floor, Furichiha, an unconscious Mikoto and her son Sasuke, the headless corpse of their husband father, and an unconscious Itachi, who appeared to be badly beaten and to their shock and fear, Naruto, in a two-tailed red chakra cloak. Bakashi took a step forward as he pulled up his hit eye to reveal his Sharingan eye. Did you do this? I did not kill the Ichiha, Anko-chan will explain. Kaiubi said, withdrew all his chakra, and the unconscious Naruto fell forward. Kakashi caught Naruto and turned to the now calmer Anko, shocked. Anko-chan. Kakashi blankly repeated what Kaiubi had just called her. Anko stood, compassed herself as best she could and nodded. I'll explain everything later it was Orich Meru and Itachi, but I don't know if he was a partner or puppet, and right now I don't fucking care. I'll talk to the old man tomorrow, right now I'm ging home Kakashi anyone tries to stop me, and I swear I'll fucking castradium. Anko said with calm sadness and anger, then casually walked out and headed home. Kakashi had seen Anko like this only once before and knew not to mess with her until she calmed down and sorted her feeling out. Let her go, call in backup and get any survivors to the hospital, take Itachi to the maximum security wing for treatment, I'll take Naruto home and stay with him. You give Anko a few minutes then tell her to go to Naruto's on Hokage-sama's orders. You tell Hokage-sama to meet us at Naruto's place right away dismissed. Everyone did as told, Kakashi vanished with Naruto in a swirl of wind and leaves. Minus 58 minutes later, Naruto's house. Is that everything Kakashi, Anko? Sirotobi said calmly. Kakashi nodded. Hi. Anko said. Sirotobi turned to the being on the bed. Naruto must be told, if my former student is after your power, Naruto must be told about you and properly trained. If you weren't able to defeat him with two tails you must be stronger. Sirotobi said and sighed. Orochimaru is relentless, and now that he knows of you he will be prepared next time. The red-eyed Naruto sighed, slightly annoyed. I do not like this, I would have preferred another year, but I have no choice. Two tails wasn't enough power to kill him, only hurt him. To kill him and ensure he can never return I will need five tails. I will not allow Naruto to be used by that bastard or get any of my power. I will be, in control of Naruto's body, got of the bed, walked up to Anko and put his left hand gently on her cheek. Bakashi's visible eyebrow went up slightly at the more than just friend's gesture. Anko-chan, I know I also speak for Naruto on this we will not let him hurt you ever again, we will kill him for you. Kaiubi said in a very caring but still demonic voice, slipped his left hand behind her head in her wild purple hair, his right went up under her shirt and gently squeezed her left breast as he pulled her face down into a passionate kiss. You are as special to us as Hinata-chan, and once I have mated with her, we will give you the happiness you've been denied. Kaiubi said, released the stunned Anko, laid on his bed and pulled back all his chakra. Anko have you and Narkakashi said then froze. Anko had a kunai at his throat and a big snarl on her face. You say one more word Cyclops, or tell anyone, especially Naruto, what just happened with me and Kaiubi, and I swear I'll kill you and feed your remains to my snakes. Anko said in her coldest voice. Not that it's any of your fucking business, but what just happened is as far as Kaiubi has gone. Naruto has only kissed me a couple times as a friend. I happen to like the brat because he understands the shit I've been through. I respect you as a ninja and my superior, but as a man you're losing ground fast. Bakashi nodded carefully. He'd never seen Anko like this before, but knew her well enough to know when she wasn't bluffing. I'm sorry Anko, I was out of line. I don't know him as well as you. Anko please calm down I'm well aware of your friendship with Naruto and what you've been doing. I'm pleased that you're just friends, but he'll also be told he's betrothed to Hinata Hayuga, as she will be told. As you know Rachimaru better than anyone else and can sense him I'm reassigning you from the Anbu to be Naruto's personal bodyguard until he can draw on at least five tails. This will keep you near him as well as Hinata and continue his training when he's not with anyone else. And please put away your kunai Anko. Sirotobi said calmly. Anko put away her kunai and smiled at Sirotobi. I accept and thank you. Anko said then bowed. Anko, be in my office tomorrow morning at 8 with Naruto, I'll tell him everything then. Anko you may stay here to watch him tonight, Kakashi, you will not speak of this to anyone dismissed. Sirotobi said and gave them a slight nod. Kakashi nodded to Sirotobi. If you'll mind having me around, I'll get to know him as a person. Kakashi said and waited a moment, when Anko nodded he vanished in a swirl of wind and leaves. Anko lunged forward and gave her surrogate father a quick hug and kiss on his cheek. Thanks old man. Sirotobi smiled. Anko was the only other person he let call him old man, but unlike Naruto she didn't do it in front of anyone. Give him a chance Anko, you know what he's lost. Hi, as long as Naruto doesn't mind having him around. Anko said and sighed. Sirotobi smiled and vanished. Anko pulled up a chair and sat next to bed to watch over Naruto. 
Minus 8.14 a.m., the next morning, Hokage Tower. Saratobi looked at the only slightly teary-eyed Naruto, he'd taken it better than he expected, though there had been a few tense moments. Are you alright Naruto? Saratobi said in a warm fatherly voice. Naruto wiped his tears on his sleeve and compassed himself. Hi, I'll be fine old man at least now I know why everyone hated me and why I have so much chakra. And you've known all along Anko-chan. Anko sniffled nervously. Hi, I couldn't tell you though, I'm sorry I had to lie to you like that Naruto-kun I can still call you kun, can't I? If you'd rather have someone else guard you, Naruto smiled warmly up at her. Of course you can Anko-chan and I'd love to have you around. At least I can introduce you to Hinata-chan now. Naruto said then his eyes got big. I'm really gonna marry Hinata-chan someday. Naruto said to Saratobi. Hi, her parents are telling her as we've talked. There's one more thing. Though you legally be an adult when you earn your hit I dot you can't be married until you're both 15, which means you must wait at least 6 years. Promise me you'll wait until then before you do anything with Hinata or anyone else. Saratobi said in a stern fatherly voice. Do anything oh, that stuff. Hi, I promise. Naruto said firmly. Saratobi smiled. Good, I know you never break a promise Naruto. Before you go, I'm going to arrange for you to have a special sensei to train you how to use Kyuubi's chakra, remember only the parents, your teachers and the Jounin no Kyuubi is sealed inside you Naruto. For safety I'd prefer you not tell anyone, but if you must or feel they can handle it, you may tell your friends just be sure they can handle it, everyone may not understand. Just remember, you are the jailer, not the prisoner, be sure they understand that. Dismissed. Naruto nodded, turned and left the office, Anko right behind him. Tsuritobi took out his pipe, lit it, took a puff and chuckled. You can come in now Jiraiya. I never could hide from your Tsuritobi sensei. Jiraiya said as he came in through the window. So that's his kid ha looks just like him. Why didn't you tell him who his dad was? Jiraiya said. Tsuritobi sighed. I will, when he turns 16 he'll be told and inherit the Namika's estates, until then you won't tell him. I I assume you want me to keep tabs on Orochimaru. Jiraiya said seriously. Hi, and give Naruto a couple hours to talk with Hinata before you meet him. Saratobi said and puffed his pipe. Before you go do you have a copy of the newest issue? Jiraiya let you a short perverted giggle, pulled the small book from his vest pocket and handed it to him. Hi, your early signed copy, it won't be out for another week. Anything for my old sensei. Jiraiya said then vanished. End chapter 3. Naruto age 12, 7.42 pm, Academy. Naruto Uzumaki. Hiroka said from the doorway and smirked. He was one of the few people at the academy that knew how strong Naruto really was. He knew how much his favorite student held back to just edge out Sasuke Chiha as top student, not just among the boys, but everyone. As Naruto headed for him to take his final exam, he knew it was only a formality, but he had to do it. Though she wasn't always around where everyone could see her, he was was the only other person in the room the new Anko was outside in a tree watching through the window. He subtly glanced out the window and nodded to her. I'm ready Iruka sensei let's get in there and get my hit I eyed. Naruto exclaimed with his usual excitement, then waved to the class and followed Aruka into the room. Ino watched Naruto enter the exam room and the door close behind him, adjusted her sleeveless purple shirt over her full breasts, like her mother she'd developed early and loved to show off her body, had one of her usual ideas and stood. Who wants to bet me Naruto-kun won't pass? If he fails I'll show you my breasts. Ino said brazenly and smiled. She waited as she looked around the room. She looked at the always horny Kiba and smiled a little bigger when he shook his head no, even he wouldn't take the bet. Ino pouted sadly and sat down. She didn't show it, but inside she was laughing her head off, she loved to tease the boys like that. Sakura hunched forward slightly in her seat to hide her small chest, she was one of the smartest students at the academy, but she'd happily be the dumbest if she could have big breasts instead of a big forehead. I may not be one of bustiest girls like you Ino pig, but thanks to Naruto-kun I'm the strongest. Sakura thought and straightened up. A minute later the door opened and Naruto walked out with a huge smile on his face and a shiny new leaf hit I eyed on his forehead. Congratulations, Naruto-kun. Hinata, Tenten, Sakura and Ino said in unison, looked at each other a moment, then broke out in giggles. Thanks girls, it was easy. Naruto exclaimed and gave everyone his patented foxy smile. Naruka chuckled at their antics. Ino Yamanaka. Ino stood with a big smile. She was the last person to go, but she knew she'd pass, everyone else had their hit I eyed already, no way was she going to fail. Naruto went back to his seat, but before he sat he pushed himself up on the table behind him with his hands and leaned over it to get a kiss from his girlfriend and fiancé Hinata. Thanks Hinata-chan. Naruto said and dropped to the floor. I knew you'd do it Naruto-kun. Hinata said happily as she listened to every girl in class whimper quietly, which made her smile happily because she was his girlfriend and as far as most knew, the only girl he ever kissed because he wanted to. 
Most of the girls had only kissed Naruto that first day because of the bed. Everyone chatted quietly for about two minutes when the door opened and Ino came out with her new hit eye eye tied around her forehead. Never doubt the diva. Ino exclaimed proudly and raised her arms with a flourish. Sit down Miss Diva, or you and your girls will be taking my class again next year while your friends are on missions. Haruka said seriously, then looked at Naruto and smirked subtly. He knew as well as everyone that Ino often referred to her breasts as her girls. Ino crossed her arms protectively over her chest, blushed bright red, ran to her seat and slumped under the table, enough to hide her chest. Everyone was red-faced from holding in their laughter at seeing Ino shut down so completely. Now that everyone has passed and become Jen and congratulations. As you all know we're assigning new teams this year so be quiet while I tell you who your teammates and sensei will be. Haruka said with a small smile. Naruto listened as Haruka read off names for team 1, 2, 3, he wondered who he'd be paired with, and his friends. Though he knew everyone in class, none of his close friends had been called until Haruka got to team 6. Team 6 will be Saku Nagato, Chichi Kazumu and Sasuke Chiha. Your sensei is Kakashi Haddock. Haruka said. Naruto watched the first two stand and move near Sasuke. Saku, or Bull as his friends called him, was the biggest kid at the academy, his ninjutsu and jinjutsu were just good enough for him to pass, as were his grades, but with tajutsu, he was about as easy to stop as an avalanche. Kichi was his opposite, she was strong where he was weak, and she was shy like Hinata used to be, he'd met her through Hinata two years ago, and was glad he had. She wanted to be a top med nin like her mother. They'll be a good team he's the muscle, she's smart and can heal, Sasuke is good at ninjutsu, weapons, is the best fighter next to me, and he'll probably activate a Sharingan soon. Naruto thought then glanced subtly at another friend. At least Sasuke is at school, I wonder why Bushy Brow won't show anyone how good he really is, or that he wears those weights. Well he has his reasons for keeping it secret, and I did promise him I wouldn't tell anyone. Naruto thought then turned and listened intently to Aruka when he started to read off the names of Team 7, especially since the first name really got his attention Hinata. Denton and Naruto Uzumaki. Aruka said with a very restrained smile. The whole class went silent as they heard the third name, even all the jealous girls were quiet, they wanted to know who was the sensei of what everyone knew would be the most powerful of all the teams. When she heard his name Hinata's eyes immediately glazed over, and her mind jumped back to when she was told she was betrothed to Naruto. Flashback, Hinata entered her father's study nervously, her mother was also there, and she couldn't read either of their faces. They only looked like that when they had something important, and sometimes bad, to say to her. She was used to it from her father, even inside the compound, but to see her mother like that was even scarier to her. Her parents' point of view, before we tell you why you're here, I think privacy is called for. Hannah said emotionlessly, then flashed through several hand signs. Seal. Now that no one will hear the screams we may begin. Hannah said coolly and subtly glanced at Hinata who was almost terrified. I'm sorry to put you through this Hinata-chan, but Naruto-kun has rubbed off on me, and I couldn't resist. Hannah thought. The Ashi almost lost his composure at what his wife just said, but knew this would more than make up for it. As head of the main family of the Hyuga clan, it is my duty to inform you, Hinata Hyuga that you are betrothed to Naruto Uzumaki and will marry him when you turn 15. Hinata, who did her head down, answered out of reflex before what she'd heard fully registered in her mind. I'm sorry father I'll do better next to Nada's head suddenly whipped up as her body locked up tight, her mouth hung wide open, and her white eyes were at least as big as saucers. I I I I I I I I I I I I I'm, what? Hinata said with a severe stutter. And his smile was even bigger than Hiashi's ear to ear smile. You're betrothed to Naruto-kun, Hinata-chan. When you turn 15 you're going to marry him. Hannah watched her daughter's face for a full minute before it started. She saw a smile of happiness slowly appear on Hinata's face the likes of which even Kami had never seen. She nudged Hiashi and gave him a sub nod before she focused Chakra into her ears to protect them from what she knew was coming. A moment later it happened, she watched Hinata unleash a scream of joy that would have made even Kaiubi cringe years ago when it attacked the village. She watched Hinata leap around the room throwing up her arms and almost literally screaming her head off she was so happy. At that moment she doubted even the entire clan could restrain Hinata. She knew putting a sound seal on the room first was a good idea. Then flashback, your sensei is Anko Mitarashi. Haruka said, just barely holding back his emotions from showing on his face. The whole room gasped, especially Naruto. All right. Naruto yelled excitedly as he jumped up on his seat, fists raised, a huge smile on his face. Haruka broke out laughing hard for a moment before he compassed himself. Please sit down Naruto. Naruto froze a moment, looked around and gave everyone an oops grin, then sat down. He made his Sakura Haruno, Ino Yamanaka and Shikamaru Nara, your sensei is Kuruna Yuhi. Haruka said. Naruto glanced at his friends. A spy team that'll be useful. 
Sakura is happy she gets to learn Jinjutsu from the best, Ino is surprised but doesn't look upset, I guess she figured she'd get put into a new Ino Shikacho. And Shikamaru he's gonna be surrounded by women like his mom all day. He'll never get any rest now, Kurunai-chan will push him to be his best day, it'll be good for him. Naruto thought and almost laughed at his lazy friend's plight. Team 9 is Niji Hayuga, Rock Lee and Chaoji Akamichi, your sensei I'm sorry to tell you, Haruka said with amused pity. Is my guy. Yosh. Rock Lee yelled excitedly and pumped his fist in the air. Everyone else let out an exasperated sigh, looked down and shook their head. They all liked and respected Guy, he was great person, but five minutes around him and his fires of youth speeches made you want to jam a kunai in your neck and end the torture. Everyone knew if he was around your only hope was Kakashi, Guy's hip eternal rival, or Naruto, with one exception Rock Lee, who actually liked Guy and thought he was cool. No one held that against Lee though. The Tajutsu team, cool. With Niji's Bayakuigan and Jaiwiken, Lee's speed and special skills, and Chaoji's expansion Jutsu, they'll be awesome. He'll never be able to use a jutsu, but I'm glad they put Lee on a team this year. Niji too, I guess their lucky guy wouldn't let them take the Chuanin exams last year, and that the graduating class was an odd number because of Tenten Chan. Naruto thought. As we had an odd number of students, two of you will have to wait for next year, I'm sorry. Team 10 is Shino Abiram, Kiba and Yuzuka and Aruka said. There were only three kids left, and one open team spot, the new Kanoichi weren't the bottom students, but they were neared. Thibault looked at the three girls as Aruka started to talk, one of which was about to be his teammate, and frowned. Just fucking greet him gonna get a bitch with a red afro, a pint-sized bully, or Kiba thought, then smiled when her name was called. Huki. I'm sorry Harumi, Ami. Aruka said. Huki squeaked in surprise, looked at her two long-time friends with shock. She never expected to get picked over them, she could walk across an empty room and managed to bump into her trip over something. She saw Kiba shrug, give her a half-smile and wave her over. She almost smiled when she heard him tell Shino he thought she was at least cute. She pulled up her big scarf to hide her blush, got up, crossed the room to sit by Kiba, and bumped into four desks on the way she was so nervous. Who's our sensei? Kiba barked out as he watched in the oversized scarf and jacket fumble her way across the room. Probably Asuma, he's the only Jounin left except for Naruto thought, then had a feeling Aruka wasn't about to say Asuma, Itachi Uchiha. Aruka said calmly, but inside he was nervous. He was one of the few that knew what really happened that night, and although he'd been a puppet of Orochimaru, he'd personally wiped out about three quarters of his clan, including his father. He knew Itachi had been cleared by Inoichi, Kurinai and Ibiki as loyal and mentally stable, though he'd objected to the idea, he figured that if Saratobi trusted him, that was good enough for him. What? Sasuke said as he stood suddenly and slapped the table with both hands. Please it's Sasuke, it's Hokage-sama's idea, you can talk to Itachi tonight at home your mother has already been told and approves. Before you ask, no you can't be transferred to his team. You and Itachi are the only two active male Ichiha, and we can't risk putting you both on one team. Iruka said seriously. Sasuke thought about that for a moment, then nodded and sat down, he knew Iruka was right, this was best for the clan. The only other remaining male Ichicha were older little kids not even in the academy yet. Your sensei will arrive soon to pick you up, please wait in this room. Iruka said, organized the papers on his desk, picked them up and left. Sasuke, Bull, Chichi, you better get comfortable Kakashi won't be here for about two hours. Naruto said with a big smirk. He'd gotten to know him the last couple years and had even learned a bunch of cool jutsu from him, privately, only a few of his friends knew how strong her really was or about his special friend he always had with him. Sasuke wasn't one of them though, he wanted to tell him, but knew his friend wasn't quite ready for the truth yet. Almost, but not quite. Minus 8 12 am, Naruto was talking with Hinata and Tenten when he suddenly smirked and turned to the door. Anko barged in brashly with a big sadistic smile on her face. I'm Anko Mitarash, which of you maggots are mine? Let her have her moment, play along and act intimidated. Naruto whispered to Hinata and Tenten. They knew Anko almost as well as he did, and that underneath what most saw they knew Anko was as much a goofy kid as he was, even more so as she never had a real childhood. Naruto raised his hand. I am Anko-sensei. Hinata and Tenten nodded subtly and did the same, but looked slightly intimidated. Anko smiled coldly. Oh good, I get Mr. Lucky and his fangirls, you're just another brat to me, so you and the bimbos get your shit and follow me. Anko commanded then turned and walked toward the door. Naruto waited until Anko was near the door. My sensei is that crazy bitch. Naruto said just loud enough that everyone heard him. At the door Anko drew a kunai as she spun and threw it at Naruto, it stuck in the chair an inch from his crotch. What was that you little shit? Naruto acted surprised and jumped up with his best scared face. Sorry, Anko sensei. Anko smiled cruelly and gave Naruto a very subtle nod the others would miss, as she listened to everyone laugh nervously, and the comments about how they were glad she wasn't fire sensei. 
Thanks Naruto-kun, I owe you one for that, maybe the four of us will play poker tonight, and I'll up the stakes from food to something more fun Anko thought as she turned and left the classroom. Minus 8.26 AM, training ground 13. Naruto-kun, Hinata, Tenten, just between us this final test is a waste of time, you three are already a team, but I have to do it as your sensei. Naruto, stay at higher level, you know out on missions you can't show your true strength except in a real emergency, so think of this as just another practice. Anko said, pushed up the left sleeve of her trench coat, bit her right thumb, and smeared the blood over her snake tattoo. Summoning Jutsu. Anko said. It was a huge puff of smoke 20 feet away, and when it cleared a moment later, it revealed a huge coil green snake that reared up to almost 20 feet and nodded to Anko. Naruto, Hinata and Tenten were impressed, that was the biggest snake they'd ever seen her summon. This is Lenarin, I rarely get to summon him, but he has a special ability I can use here. Anko said and turned to Lenarin. Remember what I told you to do. Anko said then took three blank tags from her pocket, gave one to each of them, and nodded to her summon. Lenarin started turning and twisting his head and neck a moment, then split down to where it started to coil into two complete heads. A moment later the main head did it again. That was awesome, he has three heads now. Naruto exclaimed. Your mission is simple, each of you has to put your tag on top of a head, but you can only place your tag, and you each have to tag a different head. One more thing you only have until 11 o'clock when I'm going to lunch. If you haven't all tagged him, or one of you gets knocked out, you all fail. Anko said, took a pocket watch from her trench coat and waited a moment. Begin. The moment Anko said begin Lenarin uncoiled and raced toward the far end of the training ground at incredible speed for an almost 60-foot snake. Dot. He's fast this'll be harder than I thought. Tenten said impressed. Yeah it'll be fun. Hinata-chan and I will distract him while you circle around from behind Tenten-chan and place your tag first, you should be fast enough to dodge his attacks long enough to get close and don't get hit. Naruto said. I don't have to get close, I think I can stick one on with one of my new darts. It'll bounce off and the tag will come off when it sticks to its head. It's a tough shot, but I can do it. Tenten said. Okay, stay close, Hinata-chan and I will get it to follow us to that big tree there. Naruto said and pointed. You hide there and wait for your opening. Ready. Hinata nodded. Hi. Tenten nodded. Hi, and be careful you two. They nodded and raced down the training ground, Tenten along the side, Naruto and Hinata down the middle toward their target. Minus 10.38 a.m. Hinata had just vaulted over Lenarin's head and while upside down used her hand speed to plant her tag, landed and rolled away. As Hinata rolled to safety a dozen shuriken bounced off Lenarin's left side, head Hinata had just tagged. Over here scale face, even with three heads you can't hit me. Naruto taunted very childishly and threw six shuriken at the center head he had to tag. Naruto suddenly yawned and stretched. I thought you were supposed to be tough, I might as well get something to eat for all the challenge you are. Naruto said obviously bored and turned his back to the giant snake. Naruto stood there a moment, then reached behind him and scratched his butt with his right hand, through his pants of course. Just as he finished he leapt straight up as a huge snake head passed under him. He landed on it, saw there was no tag and slapped his down. Gotcha, we win. Naruto exclaimed excitedly and punched the air. The two sides head came in and both looked down at the top of the center head, then hung in defeat. Congratulations, great teamwork which was the real reason for this anyway, you could have failed to tag all three heads, what mattered was whether or not you worked as a team. I knew you'd do it. Thanks Lenarin, you can leave if you want to. Anko said. Lenarin bowed all three heads, then vanished in a puff of smoke. Anko waited a minute for Hinata and Tenten to join Naruto. Great job, we're now officially Team 7. Lunch is on me, so where do you want to eat as if I didn't already know? Anko sighed and gave Naruto a familiar smirk. Naruto gave Anko a big foxy smile. Ichiraku Raymond. Hinata and Tenten giggled, then whispered to each other a moment. Naruto-kun, I'm cooking us dinner tonight at your house. You can't just have Raymond, so I'm going to make rice with chicken and vegetables, and you're going to eat it, Hinata said. If you're cooking Hinata-chan I'll eat it or Tenten-chan and Anko-chan uh, Anko-sensei coming too. Naruto said. If you guys don't mind, I'd love to can I bring Dango for dessert? Anko said nervously. Of course you can Anko-sensei, right Hinata-chan, Tenten-chan. Naruto exclaimed. Hinata and Tenten nodded. Now that I'm your sensei I didn't want to impose I also have a little entertainment planned for afterwards, if that's okay. Anko said then waited a moment, she smiled when they all nodded. Good, let's go eat. Now that they're gen and it's time Hinata and Tenten learn to play strip poker. Anko thought. Then chapter 4. Minus 6 28 pm, Naruto's place. I don't mind learning to play poker Naruto-kun, but strip poker. Hinata said nervously and pressed her index fingers together, something she hadn't done in several years. Me too Naruto-kun you know we'd do anything for you, but if my dad found out I Tenten said nervously and put her small hands over her breasts, which just fit in them. 
he ground me until I was 18, and mom would totally freak out. Naruto just smiled, not even a hint of worry on his face. He stepped up and put a hand on their shoulders. Don't worry Hinata-chan, Tenten-chan, we could do this with them sitting here, and neither of you would get in trouble. Hinata and Tenten glanced at each other, actually surprised, despite how well they knew him. Even for Naruto that was a lot. Naruto saw the glances and had a feeling he knew a question was coming. Do you trust me? Naruto said calmly and looked past them to Anko, who had a big smile on her face and nodded. Hi. Both girls said together without hesitation. Then relax and trust me, everything has been taken care of. Naruto said warmly. Both girls nodded and relaxed. Good. I got the table set up in the dining room, and the food, let's go play. Anko said with a big smile. Everyone went to the table and sat down. I already know how to play poker, and you know how lucky I am, I'll sit out the first game so you and Tenten-chan can get the hang of it, okay Hinata-chan. Naruto said. Hinata nodded. Can we just learn regular poker first Anko-chan. Hi, we'll play warm-up game of poker, so you two can learn it, Naruto-kun, get the poker chips. Anko said. Naruto got the poker chips and passed them out, 20 red, 20 blue, 20 white. The red ones are worth 10, the blue 5, and the white 1. Since this is your first time, the ante will be won. That's money you have to put in the pot before each hand starts Naruto said, and explained how to play, then the hands, what they were called, the cards in them, and what beat what dot that's a straight flush, the best hand you can have is called a royal flush. That's the five highest cards in order, ace, king, queen, jack and ten, all of the same suit, got it. Naruto said and waited a moment until both girls nodded. Good, compared to learning jutsu poker is really pretty easy isn't it? Hinata and Tenten nodded. Oh, Hinata-chan, no by Akuigen, that's cheating. I know you wouldn't do that, but that and using a jutsu is against the rules. Anko-chan has played a few times in casinos, and they have special security that can detect chakra if you use it, even a tiny amount. Think of this like training, it helps with strategy and controlling your emotions. Naruto said. Hinata and Tenten nodded. I couldn't have said it better myself, I'll start. Anko said with a smile, shuffled the cards and dealt five to each, except Naruto, then picked up her hand and put in a white chip, then watched Hinata and Tenten do the same. Anko glanced to her right where Naruto sat, then across from her was Hinata and Tenten to her left. Let's see, pair of queens, a two, five and seven not much, but I can use it. Anko thought, then discarded three and drew new cards. Shit, shit ah, another queen. I'll bet five. Anko said calmly and tossed in a blue chip. Hinata looked at her cards, briefly glanced at Anko when she bet to try and read her, but couldn't. Anko is good at this. All I have are these small numbers, I need a new weight, what's that called when you have 5 in sequence, but different suits a straight flush. It's only 2 through 6, but if I bluff will I should win this hand. Hinata thought. I bet 5. Hinata said calmly and put in a blue chip. 2 7s, 2 8s and a 3, if I remember right this is 2 pairs, not much, but it'll do oh, Anko did this. Tenten thought then discarded her three and drew a third seven. Tenten resisted the urge to smile happily as she normally would, like if she was on a mission she had to hide her emotions. Oh bet five. Tenten said and put in a blue chip. Good poker faces for new genin, but they were the top kanoichi at the academy. Good start, but it's time to separate the girls from the women. Anko thought, let a small frown appear on her face for a few moments, waited just long enough for them to see it, and tossed in a blue and red chip. I raised ten. Anko said with a little false bravado, she wanted them to think she was bluffing and bet big. Hinata smiled big and matched Anko's bet. Tenten held in her emotions and put in two red chips and a blue chip. I raised ten. Anko called, watched Hinata and Tenten stay in, then smiled and showed her cards. Three queens bitches, beat them if you can. Anko said proudly. Tenten smiled. Good hand Anko, but your three bitches just got evicted from my full house. Tenten said happily and showed her cards. Anko's face fell. You little bitch. Anko said annoyed and frowned. Naruto laughed. Hinata smiled broadly and showed her hand. Sorry Tenten-chan, but you're my bitch, straight flush. Tenten paled and face planted on the table. Naruto fell off his chair and rolled on the floor holding his stomach he was laughing so hard. Anko just stared at Hinata and clenched her jaw. Fucking beginner's luck Anko mumbled, then sighed in amused defeat. You got lucky Hinata, but we just started. Minus 7.56 p.m. Naruto watched his girlfriend and new sensei closely, Tenten had been taken out about an hour ago, Hinata and Anko had bet everything they had left on one final hand, he was happy, but not totally surprised Hinata had picked it up so fast, or how lucky she was. She wasn't as lucky as he was, but nobody was, she had held her own against Anko though. You're a great girl Hinata, and a good friend, but in battler cards I go right for the tits, so kiss yours goodbye full house, jacks over tens. Anko said, smiled proudly and showed her hand. Hinata looked at Anko, and her face changed from emotionless to a big smile. 
that it'd be hard to do with your wamanute kicked up into your neck Anko-chan straight flush. Hinata said calmly as she showed her hand. Anko's face and posture dropped, then a smile crept onto her face as she started to laugh, softly at first. Congratulations Hinata equals Chan. You ready to try strip poker now? Naruto said with a big smile. I'm still really nervous about this, and even with you, Tenten chan and Anko-chan I'm pretty shy, but for you Naruto-kun I'll do it. Hinata said, slightly nervous and with a small blush. I'm ready, it's no different than going to the hot spring, except you'll be here Naruto-kun. Tenten said, then paused a moment and turned to Hinata. Speaking of the hot springs, why haven't you ever joined me Hinata-chan? Do embarrassed, I'm used to being alone or with Hanabi or Kasan. Hinata said shyly. Well you're from a big clan, not like me and Naruto-kun, so you were raised differently than we were. Tenten said and smiled. She is a princess. Naruto said and smiled when Hinata blushed. Then she'll be royally embraced when I leave her naked. Anko said and laughed. Since this is their first time Anko-chan I want to change the rules a little. Before I do I want to remind you that shoes count as one thing, so do socks, and everything else you wear too can only bet what you have on, but you don't take it off unless you lose that hand, only the winner of the hand keeps their clothes on. When you lose all your clothes you have to stand over there so everyone can see you, and you can't cover up that okay with everyone. Naruto said. Enko nodded. That's fine with me. Hi. Tenten said casually. Hinata nodded. As she cleared the table Anko looked at Naruto. Naruto, we know if you play to win we'll all be naked in five or six quick hands, so I'm asking you as your friend and sensei give us a chance. Anko said calmly, almost submissively. Naruto sighed and nodded. Hi, that's only fair since Hinata-chan and Tenten-chan are playing. Naruto said. Thank you Naruto-kun. Anko said. If you don't mind, I'll deal. Naruto said. Anko thought a moment and handed him the cards. Minus three, hands later, Naruto looked around happily. Everyone was now barefoot, Anko had lost her trench coat and mesh shirt, leaving her topless. Tenten was only in her panties and sports bra, which Tenten playfully said she only wore to keep my little boobs from bouncing too much, though she didn't really need it. As he thought, Hinata was doing well, she still had on her black knee shorts, dark blue shirt he could only see the collar of, and her grey jacket he'd never seen her without. He'd lost one on purpose so he could take his shirt off, he liked how Tenten and Hinata blushed lightly when they looked at his lean muscled body. He knew Anko looked at him too, but as Anko liked to say, he had her by the tits, and though he could now that he'd learned about girls and sex, from the academy and several adults that had given him the talk, he'd promised not to do anything with them until he'd married Hinata, that didn't mean he couldn't look though. You're bad Anko. I don't have a choice, I want to win back my shirt and trench coat, so I'm all in. Anko said seriously. Naruto just smirked. Me too. Denton was surprised, then smiled. I'll just end up naked, but I've wanted to show Naruto kun my boobs since I got him, I'm all in too. Hinata was blushing bright red. I I, come on Hinata chan, you're a Kinoichi now, if you're going to be on my team you won't have any weaknesses, and being shy is a weakness. So suck it up, grow some tits and go all in. Anko said seriously. Anko saw a very subtle flinch when she told Hinata to grow some tits. No that has to be it though, that's why she never takes that fucking jacket off, she's probably fucking stacked and is ashamed of her body, or thinks something is wrong with her. Anko thought then glanced subtly at Naruto, and when she locked eyes with him, gave him a subtle nod towards Hinata's chest, then saw the reaction in his eyes she just had. Hinata felt a foot on her leg and looked at Anko, the look she saw on Anko's face has only one meaning, then she saw the same look on Naruto's face, but Tenten didn't seem to. Oh Kami they know. I can do this, mom said I'd have to show them eventually. They're my best friends, Naruto is going to marry me in a three years, and Anko in my sensei now. If Naruto-kun can trust us with his secret, I can't to Hinata thought, then push down her blush. I'm all in too. Okay, lay him down. Full house. Queen high. Anko said with a smile, do pair, tens and jacks. Tenten said sadly. Hinata smiled and looked at Naruto. Straight flush see can you bbth that Naruto-kun. Hinata said nervously, with a stutter she hadn't done in years. Naruto's face was emotionless as he laid his cards on the able. Royal flush sorry Hinata-chan. Hinata whimpered a moment, then sighed that's okay Naruto-kun, I knew this would happen eventually. I'll go last if that's okay. Anko nodded, stood and stepped out into the room. Hinata, Tenten, until we can be more than just friends, this stays between us. Since we're sharing secrets anyway I'll tell you both in case you didn't figure it out already, Naruto-kun owns my ass, heart and soul. We haven't done anything yet because he's waiting until he marries you Hinata-chan, but if he wanted to walk me naked through the streets on a leash with property of Naruto Uzumaki tattooed across my tits, I'd do it with a smile. I'm not the only one, but it's not my place to reveal anyone else. Do either of you have a problem with this? Anko said seriously. No Anko-sensei. Tenten said. No Anko-chan. 
Hinata said. Good. You learned this at the academy, but pictures aren't the same as experience Anko said, then pulled down and stepped out of her knee shorts and panties. This is what a real woman's body looks like, any questions? Anko said proudly. Naruto just smiled, he'd seen her already. Hinata stood. I do when did you develop and how big are you? I was 10 and had these babies before I was 11. I'm a big D cup, almost an E, and one of the biggest Kanoichi in Kanoha. As you all know, the biggest Kanoichi tits in Kanoha belong your mother Hana both of mine together are almost as big as one of hers, lucky bitch. No offense Hanada. Anko said. Hanada smiled, blushed and nodded. I know, and it's okay Anko-chan, I know your friends. My turn I guess besides, I may be a genin now, but mom would blister my butt if she found out I went back on a deal, even one she didn't like. You know how she is Naruto Kunded wouldn't let me help him at the shop for a month at least, and he'd blister my butt too. I wouldn't sit for a week. Tenton said, got up, walked to Anko and removed her sports bra and panties with only a slight blush. So what do you think Naruto Kun I don't have what Anko Sensei does up top, or even most of the girls that graduated with us, and I don't have anything down there yet, but I'm really cute. You're adorable Tenton Chan, and I'll bet you look just like your mom in a couple years. Naruto said. Tenton smiled. Thank you Naruto Kun. Mom isn't quite as big as Anko Sensei and told me that small boobs run in the family, but I hope I'll have enough to at least properly fill out a sports bra in a couple years, I'll never be as big as her though. Her, who are talking about Tenton? Anko asked. Naruto and Hinata looked at Tenton curiously. I guess I can tell you guys, but you have to promise me you won't tell anyone and you won't put this in my record Anko Sensei. Tenton said seriously, but nervously. Not Naruto, Hinata and Anko all nodded. The her I referred to as my idol the San and Tsune Naruto, you know I like you and want to be more than friends well you're the only boy I feel that way about. Not because of my age or anything see, what I haven't told anyone is Tenton got really nervous and swallowed hard. I'm, Anko's eyes suddenly opened wider for a moment. How long have you known you were gay Tenton? Anko interrupted. Naruto and Hinata were shocked. But if you're gay Tenton, how can Naruto said confessed? Tenton shrugged. I've known since I was nine Anko sensei. I don't know Naruto-kun, you make me feel safe, I can trust you with my life and know you'll never hurt me. Naruto got up, walked to Tenton and looked in her eyes. You're one of my best friends in the whole world Tenton-chan, we have been since the second day of academy when you showed up. I'll always be your friend and protect you, no matter what. Naruto said with as much love as he could, then gave her a hug and kissed her left cheek. Besides now I have someone I can talk about girls with, Naruto said as he laughed through a big smile. Tenton returned his hug and smiled happily. When we're older I'll help you Jetum too, I can learn all their secrets in places you can't go. Tenton said with a devious smile. Anko burst out laughing really hard. I love it. Tenton, Naruto and Anko laughed a minute longer, then Tenton noticed Hinata wasn't. Hinata-chan are you mad at me or disgusted that I like girls that way? Tenton said nervously. Do you think about me that way? Hinata asked, then sighed when Tenton nodded. Naruto-kun, when we're finally married will you want Anko-sensei, Tenton-chan? Or others to join us? Naruto was quiet a moment, then sighed and nodded. Hi, Hinata-chan but not behind your back, and I won't force you to do anything, but no matter what you will always be my Hinata-heim, and first in my heart. Hinata smiled, she knew he meant it. I guess I could learn to share you, as long as I'm always your true love. I'll be right back. Hinata said then turned and went into the bathroom. Everyone waited nervously for almost five minutes before the bathroom door opened. Hinata walked out only in her oversized grey jacket, it hung just low enough to cover her entire body, only her head, hands and legs showed. This is no different than being at a public hot spring, though I haven't been to one I can do this. We're just looking right, so it's okay. Hinata said nervously, as if trying to convince herself. Hinata walked across the room, stopped eight feet in front of them, and turned her back to them. Naruto watched and listened a moment, then heard the zipper on her jacket slide to the bottom and separate. He watched her fidget a moment, then turned back to them, her hands holding her jacket closed. Promise you won't laugh at me or anything, I'm kinda different. Hinata said nervously. I promise. They said together, then smirked they'd said it at the same time. He immediately shut his eyes and appeared in front of Kaiubi's cage, who was rolling on the floor laughing. That wasn't funny furball. Naruto screamed angrily. I couldn't resist the prank the look on your face was priceless. Kaiubi said as he paused from his laughing fit, then lost it again. You'll pay for that later furball. Naruto said then vanished from his mindscape. I don't care what he does to me, that was so fucking worth it. Kaiubi said with a huge demonic smile. Back in the real world, one second after he promised, thank you Tenten-chan, Anko-sensei and especially you Naruto-kun, I'd just die as you laughed at me or said I was ugly. Hinata said honestly, took a deep breath, then quickly opened her jacket wide. 
Fenton got a nosebleed from both nostrils and fainted, her legs folded under her. Naruto got a minor nosebleed, but held his focus. Inada what size Anko said, stunned. I'm a fully cut there fat and saggy, but what do you think? Hinata said nervously, beautiful Hinata-chan. Naruto said, obviously impressed. Anko looked down at herself, blushed from shame and crossed her arms over her chest. Please cover up Hinata as a woman I'm totally ashamed to stand here in your presence. Hinata closed her jacket, zipped it up, ran over to Anko and hugged her. Please don't be Anko-sensei. Thank you please get dressed Hinata-chan, I'll wake Tintin and we'll get dressed. At the table I figured out from your reaction that you were hiding big breasts, but I expected C cups, maybe D, and if you're like your mother, you probably aren't done growing yet. Then there's Tintin we all have a lot to talk about. Anko said calmly, but inside her emotions were churning. Anata nodded, turned and went back to the bathroom to get dressed. In Naruto's mindscape, Kaiubi was worried. Maybe I should have told him what Hinata was hiding last year when I figured it out in Tintin, maybe that illusion was a bad idea, but it's his fuel he didn't pay closer attention to them. Kaiubi thought to himself so Naruto wouldn't hear him. Lady Luck appeared in Naruto's mindscape, arms crossed over her chest, an angry frown on her face, and tapping her right foot. Kaiubi took a very submissive posture on his belly, he'd forgotten he wasn't to mess with Naruto's relationship with Hinata. I'm fucked. Kaiubi said worried, then really got scared when he saw her smile sadistically, which on a celestial being was truly terrifying. End chapter 5, August 6, 8.04 am, Hokage Tower, a month after graduation, Tsuritobi smiled at Naruto. I mean at Naruto. Anko, your team will escort our client back to Wave Country to finish the bridge. Alright, we finally get a C-rank mission. Naruto exclaimed and punched the air. Don't get too excited Brad a C-rank escort mission is only a small step up from a D-rank mission if we're really lucky, and not a word Brad will get attacked by some bandits, not trained shinobi. I've done almost 200 of these, all you'll get out of this is maybe a few friends and a decent paycheck. Anko said, almost bored. She's right Naruto, despite how skilled your team is, you're only getting this because it is such low risk. Please come into Zuna. Saratobi said, the last line towards the door. Everyone turned to the door and saw a tall thin man in worn clothes and straw hat, he had a weathered face, grey goatee and bottle of sake in his right hand. A bunch of kids. I thought I was getting trained ninja they should be in school, and you should be dancing in a bar showing off those great tea Taksuna said, obviously a little drunk, then froze when four kunai buried in the wall around his head, two on each side not an inch from his head, the top two pinning his hat to the wall. What did you say about Anko-sensei? Naruto said angrily, his arm still extended from his throw. Tsuritobi sighed and slowly shook his head. Naruto, that's no way to treat a client, regardless of what they say or how they treat you, your job is to protect them. You don't have to like them. Anko stepped up to Tazuna and pulled the kunai out of the wall. I would have aimed lower and pinned something else to the wall. Anko said softly but coldly, then handed the kunai back to Naruto. Tazuna swallowed very nervously and suddenly felt very sober. I obviously misjudged your skills I apologize. The bandits have me on edge, I'm not a fighter, I'm a bridge builder. August 9, 5.42 p.m., outside Wave Country Quarter, they sat around the campfire, Anko across from Tazuna, Naruto to her right, Tenten to her left, Hinata sat next to Tazuna, she just deactivated her Byakugan after a scan of the area. Still clear Hinata? Anko asked. Hi, Anko-sensei, all clear within 500 yards of us. Hinata said. Good. Naruto, since you don't sleep much anyway you take first watch again. Wake me at midnight, we're leaving early in the morning, we should be in wave tomorrow, and reach the bridge in two days right. Anko said. Azuna nodded. If we keep up the space we should reach the bridge in two days sorry I can't walk any faster, but I am an old man. Everyone laughed, they'd gotten to know him, and despite their first impression, he was good guy, a bit of a pervert, as he glazed at Anko's basically bare chest beneath her mesh shirt when her trench coat allowed it, but they let that slide since he didn't say anything like he had in Saratobi's office when they met him. Anko wasn't going to tell anyone, but she actually enjoyed teasing the old guy with intentional flashes, knowing he wouldn't say anything out of fear she's castrate him. It'll be dark soon, so get your bed set up, it won't rain tonight so no tents. Tazuna, you can use my bedroll, I won't need it, set up next to the fire, we can't have you getting sick, it gets chilly out here at night. Anko said, and got comfortable on the log she was sitting on and closed her eyes. How does she do that without falling over? Tazuna said, amazed. It's a shinobi trick, she doesn't fully go to sleep, if anything happens she'll come out of it instantly. Just be quiet and don't bother her, she gets cranky if you disturb her and nothing is wrong. Trust me, you don't want to see Anko-sensei in a bad mood, even our Anbu avoider when she is. Naruto said quietly but seriously. Azuna swallowed nervously and nodded. He wasn't from a shinobi village, but knew basically what Anbu were. If she scared them, he sure as hell wasn't going to upset her. 
August 11, 2.51 p.m., two miles from town. They were walking down the dirt road in a very casual diamond formation around Tazuna, only experienced shinobi would recognize as being a formation. Anko was four feet in front of him, Tenton close on his left, Hinata about a foot away on his right, Naruto two feet behind him, all were walking casually and chatting about nothing in particular. Naruto reached up and casually scratched his head with his right hand, but pressed the talk button on his hidden communicator. You saw the puddle Anko sensei. It hasn't rained in at least a week. Naruto whispered and lowered his hand. A moment later he saw Anko subtly nod, Naruto focused his chakra into his senses. Found him. Naruto thought. Hold up a sec, I have make stop. Naruto said, then when they turned to look at him he he subtly mouthed ambush to Tenten and Hinata to alert them, then ran into the woods out of sight. Ayakugan Hinata subtly whispered to herself and the veins around her eyes bulged. A moment later a masked shinobi flew out of the woods near where Naruto entered and slammed into a tree. Before he could fall almost 60 kunai pinned him to the tree by his clothes from his collar to his wrists and ankles. A moment later a short brunette with her hair in buns had a kunai pressed to his throat. You even twitch a finger and your head comes off. Tenten said coldly and pressed the super sharp edge of her kunai firmly into his neck, which made small cuts. To call any of Tenten's edged weapons razor sharp would be a personal insult to her honor. Hinata was in her juikan stance in front of Tazuna. Don't move, I'll protect you. Hinata said confidently, she was thankful Naruto had taught her to be fearless, as well as Anko, especially in the short time Anko had been their sensei. She knew the old her would have frozen up from fear. Anko stood alert and ready, but didn't act. She then watched an identical shinobi to the first fly out into view and slam into anther tree and collapse to the ground. Naruto leapt out into view over the road and drove a devastating punch into the back of the man's head as he began to rise, obviously knocking him out. Hell, she knew that punch would put her out cold. Anko then saw the bladed gauntlet on the men's arms and snarled as she recognized them. She immediately stormed to Tazuna and grabbed his collar. Those are the demon brothers, see rank you in an assassins who's after you, and don't give me any bullshit about bandits, they're in the bingo book. Azuna swallowed nervously and began to sweat. I, uh, that down Anko yelled and yanked Azuna down with her as a huge sword fly overhead and buried in a tree. She sprang back up to her feet and flinched. Oh fucks abuse a mamachi, demon of the mist. Standing on the sword still buried in the side of the tree was the six foot six heavily muscled man in elbow length gray gloves, gray shinobi sandal, black pants and sleeveless black shirt, his face covered from his nose down by bandages, his misted eye eyed with a scratch through it on his forehead above his left eye. He stepped off his sword, yanked it from the tree with ease and slung it over his right shoulder. Nice job taking them out and you've got some nice moves too babe I love the shirt, shows off those great tits. Tell you what, hand over the bridge builder, and I'll let you and the girls keep your heads and their virginity. I gotta tell you though, the little bitch with the kunai looks feasty, she'd give me a good fight when I raped her. Zabuza said casually. Penton was angry, but paled in fear, she didn't know the name, but the sword he had she did recognize and knew it had one purpose, to cut people in half, and it was forged by a master, that was the blade of a killer. It's good to know I haven't been fortin. Zabuza said proudly. Protect Azuna. Anko commanded and pulled several kunai. Forget it asshole you want him, you'll have to go through me first. You might be stronger than me, but I won't go down easy, I still want to kill the son of a bitch, but I was personally trained by Orich Mary you don't scare me. Anko said with no fear. Zabuza's eyebrows went up nauticably. Ah you must be Anko Midarashi, I've heard about you you're supposed to be a pretty tough bitch. This will be fun. Zabuza said as he lifted his sword off his shoulder. Naruto, protect Azuna, get everyone out of here now. Anko commanded. She'd felt his chakra start to rise, but didn't want him to lose control if she lost. Naruto clenched his jaw and hands around the kunai he held. He wanted to argue, but knew his priority was to protect Azuna. Zabuza laughed. Tell you what, watching that little fight, you having the guts to face me alone, and I haven't seen great tits like yours in months, I'll cut you a break. I already know where you're going, so I'll let you go for today, but next time I'll kill you. Zabuza said and vanished. Hinata? Anko asked. Already active, Hinata looked around with her Bayakugan as far as she could. He's gone Anko-sensei but he wasn't alone, someone else was hidden in a tree near him. Azuna saw the still angry Anko turn to him. I know and I'm sorry I lied, but we couldn't afford an air rank mission. Come to my house and I'll explain everything, I promise, just please don't abandon me. If you leave, I'm dead and so is Wave. Country. August 12, 7.38 a.m., the road. He'd been 10 minutes from the bridge when it happened, Hinata was guarding Tazuna, Tenten was fighting Zabuza's partner, and currently trapped in a dome of ice mirrors, and so far holding her own, but Haku was incredibly fast, even Tenten was having trouble hitting the masked nin, even worse for him though, Anko was in a very heated battle against Zabuza. 
He knew Anko was going all out just to match Zabuza, who he could tell wasn't. What was he doing he'd had to intercept a water clone of Zabuza before it could kill Tazuna and possibly Hinata, during which Tenten was locked in Haku's ice mirror prison. He watched Tenten and Anko closely, hoping nothing bad happened but it did. Zabuza hit Anko with a massive water dragon that slammed her into a tree, it was obvious to him she had broken ribs, her right arm was useless, and her right leg was probably fractured, maybe broken, her scream told him everything he needed to know, she was in serious trouble if she screamed. Zabaza was walking to the stunned Anko sword ready as he got blows he raised it to strike. Zabuza suddenly pivoted in time to dodge or block a massive barrage of kunai and shuriken. He looked at the attacker and saw the blonde kid standing there, four obviously blank scrolls on the ground around him, and putting off a massive amount chakra. Damn, someone's been hiding their power red chakra, oh shit he's a fucking jinchuriki. Zabuza said to no one then rushed him at incredible speed. Not feeling Kayubi's chakra rushing through him Naruto knew he wasn't supposed to call on it, but at the moment he didn't care, he'd be damned if he was going to let his friend and sensei get killed. He ducked a head swing, then jumped the back swing that an instant later would have cut him in half and threw a kick at Zabuza's head that was dodged. I will not let you kill my sensei. Naruto Kaiubi said as a chakra cloak formed around him. If he's just an animal I can handle three or four tails and still kill him, but if he has full control I could handle one, I have a slim chance against two, I just wish I knew which demon he had, it'd help if I knew which one I was dealing with. Zabuza thought.let's change the field. Zabuza said and flashed through several hand signs. Hidden Miss Jutsu. Zabuza said and within seconds everything within 50 yards was covered in a thick chakra laced fog. Naruto just smiled, inhaled deeply through his nose, two red chakra tails formed behind him, and an instant later landed a devastating punch to Zabuza's stomach that folded him in half, dropped him to his knees, and made him drop his sword. Naruto quickly picked it up with his right clawed hand, his left grabbed Zabuza's hair and raised his head as he raised the sword to kill Zabuza with his own weapon. Naruto's face suddenly changed from anger to slight confusion as he sniffed the air. You smell wrong. Naruto said then drove half the massive blade into the ground and ripped open the top section of Zabuza's shirt high on his chest, left side. A seal. Zabuza yelled and drove a barrage of powerful punches at Naruto's stomach and crotch, all were blocked by the chakra cloak. Fuck. Just kill me already damn it. Zabuza yelled, apparently in rage. I will but first I will know what you're hiding. It's a powerful seal, but no match for Kaiubi no Kitsune. Kaiubi said in a calm but powerful voice, temporarily in charge with Naruto's permission. Zabuza's eyes opened wide. Kaiubi? I guess I am going to hell unless. Zabuza thought. Wait. If we surrender and swear our eternal loyalty to you will you spare us? Zabuza said quickly but clearly. Haku leapt from an ice mirror that had suddenly appeared near them. Don't kill Zabuza-sama. Haku yelled in a feminine voice and was immediately blasted away by red chakra. Kaiubi released a pulse of chakra that dispersed the mist. The can't you're a missing in the hunter nins would follow you to Konoha, you aren't worth the trouble you'd cause us to shelter you. Anko said between gasps. Kill him. Thereafter Zabuza Mamachi and Haku Zabuza said, did several one-handed signs and touched the exposed seal. Release. Zabuza said with a smile then transformed, but it wasn't a transformation jutsu or jinjutsu, it was a physical transformation. As Anko watched her eyes just opened wider and wider as total shock until it was finished. You can't be every record on you says that I'm a man long story, a seal master put this on me when I was five, nobody knows except Haku who's also a girl. Zabuza said. August 24, 11.23 am, Kanoha, Hokage Tower. Once we were off the Yuzumaki Bridge and out of sight it was an easy two-day run back to Kanoha stop smiling like that Naruto-kun, this is a mission debriefing not a party. Anko said sternly, but just couldn't keep the big grin off her own face. Atsuritobi just sat behind his desk for several minutes outwardly calm but inside totally shocked. I sent them on an easy C-rank escort mission that turned into an A-rank mission. Naruto beat two high C-rank assassins that are now dead, they fought Zabuza Mamachi, who almost killed Anko, but was not only beaten by Naruto, brought him, her to our side, and officially killed Zazuba and his, her partner Haku, their sword and mask left as a memorial in Wave, build the shipping tycoon Gato who was behind everything in Wave, and now I have to decide what to do with a woman and girl that used to be Zazbuza and Haku. I guess Naruto should officially get credit for killing them and the bounty on Zabuza. Saratobi thought, took a puff on his pipe and let it out with a long sigh as he looked over the unregistered snow nin formerly called Haku and the woman that was the air rank missing Miss Nin Zabuza Mamachi. The girl is tall for 16, small chest and very thin, but according to their report she's incredibly fast and spurt with senbin and healing herbs and has a keke genkai for eyes, but she is from snow so that's not unexpected, though I thought most of them were killed. And then there's Abusa, she needs a new name. 
Pami is she big, looks about 6'5", 6'6", very muscular for a woman, obviously very powerful as she was one of the seven swordmen of mist, but still beautiful. Short black hair looks like Naruto's, long legs and large breasts, f, maybe double f cup, I better warn Jiraiya about her before he does something I think she'd react like Tsune did, but she might actually kill him or worse. Saratobi thought, has looked like perverted thoughts didn't show on his face. Anko, report to the hospital at once for proper treatment. Saratobi said calmly, then his face turned very serious as he looked at Haku, Zabuza, and then Naruto. I should send them to Ibiki for interrogation, and you know that Naruto bit because of your special skills, I'm putting them in your custody for now. Both of you will follow Naruto's orders and fill out some paperwork I'll have sent to him. You will be model citizens, and if you prove your loyalty you will become Leaf Kanoichi, but the first time you attack someone without very good reason, or we even suspect betrayal by either of you Naruto, you will kill both of them, is that clear? Saratobi said in a very serious almost dead voice. Naruto, Zabuza and Haku all flinched. Hi, Hokage-sama. Naruto said almost sadly, he didn't like it, but he couldn't argue. You have my word Hokage-sama, we have sworn our eternal servitude and loyalty to Naruto, and make the same promise to serve Konoha faithfully, and if needed die to protect it. As you know Naruto is a special kid even before his friend showed up, I knew there was something special about him the moment I saw him in action. I didn't want to admit it myself at first, but I knew I wasn't going to beat him, I've been dodging hunter nins most of my life, the last 5 years with Haku, but that's no lie for a kid, so when I saw my chance to finally kill Zabuza Mamachi I took it. It was a major blow to my pride to do it, but submitting to that brat as my true self was the only way to stay alive. I don't fear death, but I've come to think of Haku as my daughter and couldn't let her die so young. Zabuza said and gave Suratobi a full formal bow of submission and saw the smiling Haku do the same a moment later. Saratobi nodded and smiled subtly. Dismissed. Naruto nodded and smiled. Sorry Anko and Saikari her to the hospital. Hey brat don't ah Anko said before she was scooped up. I meant what I said when we first met, so enjoy the ride baby. Zabuza said with a big smile, then leapt out the open window to the nearest roof and raced across them towards the hospital. I'll follow them, Tenten, Haku, follow Hinata-chan to the hospital. Naruto said then jumped out the window. The three Kanoichi just giggled a moment, nodded to Saratobi and ran out of the room, the door quickly but quietly closed behind them by Haku. Saratobi chuckled and pulled a little orange book out of his desk drawer. How does he do it, I'm going to figure how he can wrap any female, civilian or Kanoichi around his finger like that. I just hope I live long enough to see him make Hokage, maybe he'll send a couple my way. Saratobi said with a perverted smile and opened his latest Ichi Ichi Paradise to the bookmark. End chapter 6. July 15, 814 AM, near the park. A nine-year-old boy ran through the street, turned a corner, and moments later crashed into someone and fell on his butt. Watch where you're going you little shit. He said, reached down and lifted the boy off his feet by his collar. He looked at the hit I eyed on the man's head, he wore a black suit that covered everything but his face, which was painted, and had a big bundle on his back you are from Suna, here for the Chuanan exams, and my name is Konohamaru Suratobi, grandson of the Hokage, so you better put me down catface. Hankiru smirked, amused. Oh really? Big deal Shitston, I'm the son of the Kazakiage, so I don't care either apologize for running into me, or I'll beat you bloody. The kunai suddenly passed between them, cutting Konohamara's shirt, which ripped and dropped him to his feet, a moment later he was behind his friend. I don't care if you're the Kazakiage you threaten a kid again especially one of my friends, and I'll beat you bloody. Naruto said fiercely then ruffled Konohamara's hair. You okay? I'm fine boss. I was gonna apologize, until he threatened me now I'm not going to, catface. Konohamaru said. It's war paint you little kankiru almost yelled. Leave the kid alone catface. A well-built blonde girl with four short ponytails interrupted with an amused smirk. Oh come on to Mari, he ran into me. Kankiru said exasperated. I don't care kankiru, you beat up a little kid or get in a fight before the exams and get us kicked out, and you can tell him why, because I want Amari said calmly but firmly. Besides, the blonde kid and his little girlfriends don't look like they're even worth the effort. Tamari said, sounding almost bored. Though that blonde kid is damn cute, makes my nipples hard just looking at him, I wonder if he has a girlfriend. No, remember why you're here Tamari a real shame though, I hope he survives. Tamari thought, the last part sadly. Stop playing around or I'll kill you both. A dead voice said from above them. Everyone turned to see a red-haired boy in brown robes, black-ringed eyes, the kanji for love on his forehead in red and a huge gourd on his back, he was standing on a limb 15 feet up in a tree by the street, his arms crossed over his chest. Naruto saw the black-clad boy called Kankiru and the blonde girl he'd called Tamari look at the new boy and cringe in terror. Naruto went to full alert when he saw him, something about the redeed bothered him, but was very familiar. 
Naruto saw him do a sand shushin from the tree to the street next to the other two, who stepped back in fear. He could tell they were both strong, but the redeed was different, he hit it well, but was far stronger than he should be, he could feel it. That's it he's a Jinchuriki like me. Kaiubi, can you tell which one he has? Naruto thought. Iwubi tapped into Naruto's senses and enhanced them, and he studied the red-headed boy that for him was about five minutes, but a second in the real world. It has to be Shukaku, the one-tailed raccoon want me to, no. Naruto interrupted. We won't do anything unless he tries to kill someone or use Shukaku's chakra. I know that look in his eyes, I used to have it, he's never known love or even had a friend. Naruto thought. Iwubi just nodded and laid down in his cage. Get out of here and you Naruto said and pointed to Gara, no fear on his face. If you hurt any of my friends I'll kill you. Naruto said seriously. Damari and Kankiru were about to laugh at the blonde kid, then saw the look on his face, he seemed to know what Gara was, they'd seen the look on hundreds of people and Suna, but unlike them, this kid wasn't scared even a little. Gara raised his eyebrow slightly, and a very subtle smirk appeared on his lips. We will meet again, and I will kill you. Gara said in a dead voice, turned and walked Awa, Tamari and Kankiru followed him. That kid with the red hair is really scary. Konohamaru said, obviously intimidated. Anada and Tenten nodded in agreement. Naruto waved over Mogi and Yudin from where they were hiding. Why are you two okay? Naruto asked, then smiled when they nodded. Come on, let's go get some breakfast, you three look hungry, and we'll need our energy for the exams. We don't have to be there until 11 so where do you guys want to eat? I'm buying. Naruto said to the Konohamaru Corps with a big smile. Minus 11.06 a.m., exam building, floor 2. Naruto, Hinata and Tenten behind him to either side, walked up behind his friends. Hey Sasu team, bull, Chichi-chan watching the show. Naruto said obviously amused. Almost 30 feet away about a dozen genin, some from Konoha, were trying to get past a pair of Chunin guards in front of a door disguised by a weak Jinjutsu to look like the third floor door they had to find. I stink at Jinjutsu, and even I saw through it, don't they realize this is the second floor? And people think I'm thick-headed. Bull said in his deep voice, and chuckled. How did those bakas ever make Jen in any way if this is the competition our only challenge is you three and my brother's team? Sasuke said both amused and disappointed. Naruto got serious. Have you guys met the Suna team yet? Blonde girl with four ponytails and what looks like a giant fan on her back, a guy in all black with a big bundle on his back and a redeed with a big gourd on his back be careful of the redeed, he's a lot stronger than he looks. If you see our friends tell them to avoid him at all costs. We met him earlier he almost killed his teammates for no reason. I can't tell you why, just please trust me and do what I ask. Naruto said quietly, but very seriously. Sasuke looked at Naruto, he knew Naruto had a lot of quirks, but one of the things he never joked about was his friend's safety. Alright, but if he's that dangerous shouldn't you tell someone? If they make it to the matches I will, besides we won't see our sensei until then anyway, so if they are up to smithing, it's better to just watch for now and gather more info on them. Sasuke thought a moment then nodded. Good point, always know your enemy. Come on, let's get upstairs, we've wasted enough time here anyway. Sasuke said, turned and headed for the stairs. Naruto nodded to his teammates and followed Team 6. I just know in the next couple days I'll have to tell Sasuke and the others that don't know about you for bowl they're ready, I just wish I'd done it sooner. Naruto thought. Iwubi just laughed, he desperately wanted to tell Naruto I told you so, but held it in, he knew something big was going to happen soon, and this wasn't the time to have a fight with Naruto. Minus 12.14 p.m., floor 3, exam room 34. Naruto sat calmly in his seat, Ibiki had just finished his big speech about the rules, and that they'd only have 40 minutes, then he'd give them the 10th question. Only the Jounin and Hokage knew that Naruto knew Ibiki as well as the rest of them, and been trained by him in mental discipline, and a few special jutsu he used. He had to use a lot of willpower to keep from laughing when Ibiki raised his bandana to show his heavily scarred head. He heard many of the genin's shocked reactions, even some of his friends, he didn't want to spoil Ibiki's fun, the man truly loved to scare the shit of people of course, being the head Anbu interrogation, it was no surprise he was a sadistic bastard Anko either, as he'd trained her as well to be one of his top interrogators, though she hadn't actually done that in years, there weren't many people in Konoha Anko didn't scare as much as Ibiki did. Of course if he told everyone that Ibiki was a really nice guy when you got to know him, or that Anko was a big submissive if you approached her the right way he'd ruin their carefully crafted images. After she heard Ibiki say begin Hinata turned over her paper and saw the nine questions on it were way above their level, most genin had no chance of answering any of these questions correctly, even she could only answer three, maybe four. She was wondering how they were supposed to pass this test when she suddenly felt something in her jacket just above her full breasts. She unzipped her jacket two inches, waved it like she was hot, glanced down into the space between her jacket and shirt, and saw a tiny blue toad look up at her with a smile. 
Don't say anything Hinata-sama, Naruto-sama sent me to help you. The tiny toad whispered so only Hinata could hear him. Naruto-sama sent one of us to Tenten-sama as well. He said we're supposed to cheat to pass this test, just not get caught. There are several Chuan in here with completed tests for you to copy off. One is one row down, between you and Naruto-sama, do you see him? The tiny male toad whispered. Hinata glanced at the student in front and to her left and almost gasped, his test was filled out with the answers. She nodded subtly. Copy from him and wait for time to run out. If you want to pass a message to Naruto-sama or Tenten-sama tell me, I'll pass it on to the others, they'll translate and relay it to them. Oh Naruto-sama wants me to tell you to stop calling your breasts fat and saggy, they're full and only sag a little because they're heavy, he loves his sweet melon girl and can't wait until she's ripe and ready to pick. It whispered almost embarrassed. Hinata looked down at the table and blushed bright red at Naruto's nickname for her. It took her a few moments to suppress her blush, but when she did she raised her head and started to copy answers. Please tell Naruto-kun thank you, but he'll have to wait two years to harvest them. Hinata whispered and blushed again, but just for a moment. Soon after she heard a quiet chuckle and turned to see Naruto blushing subtly. Henton saw Hinata and Naruto acting a little silly and smirked, she knew basically what was going on. Sorry I don't have much for you to sit on. Tenton whispered to the tiny white toad on her chest beneath her shirt, above her sports bra. She actually liked how the tiny toad felt sitting on her chest. From my view, your chest is gigantic, they look like mountains to me. It whispered. Tenton blushed slightly. He called my little sea cups gigantic like mountains Tenton squealed happily to herself. In the year since she graduated she filled out and finally felt like a real kanoichi, all her girlfriends had, she'd even come out to them and was happy they didn't think or act differently towards her. She'd even been on a couple sleepovers, the last was her favorite though, she'd finally convinced Hinata to go, she could still see their faces when Hinata finally took off her jacket, Hinata had grown the least, only one cup size, but what she had dwarfed them and their moms. She'd found their reactions hilarious, especially Ino who thought her D cups were the biggest of all her friends. Minus 12.50 p.m. Now for your final question Ibiki said and told them about the pass or fail conditions of the final question. Naruto almost smirked, during Ibiki's explanation he'd figured out the real reason for the final question, the conditions he gave made it obvious to him. Tell Hinata-chan and Tenten-chan not to worry, just sit and wait Gamachibi. Naruto whispered to the tiny orange toad in his jacket, who croaked the message to the others at a frequency only they could hear. Naruto glanced around, saw their subtle nods, then leaned back in his chair, put his feet up and his hands behind his head, he looked almost bored. Naruto's friend saw him, then the rest of Team 7 relax, figured Naruto knew what he was doing, since he was never wrong about anything, and knew he wouldn't fail, so they did the same. Sasu chuckled quietly when several teams folded under the pressure and quit. He watched a total of five teams finally quit and noticed the team from the New Sound Village and the one from Suna that Naruto had warned him about didn't quit. But did anyone else? Ibiki said and waited a moment. Then it's my pleasure to tell everyone that you passed. Ibiki said and smiled. That's it, we don't leave and we pass. There's no tenth question. Kiba asked. When he saw Ibiki shake his head no, he face planted on the desk. Buki giggled loudly at her teammate's antics and covered her mouth with both hands. At that moment a spear crashed through the widow, stuck in the far wall, and a banner unrolled from the end that said Anko Midarashi right after it did Anko leapt in through the now open window, stood proudly in front of Ibiki's desk with her crazy bitch face. I'm Anko Midarashi you maggots, proctor of the second exam, so pick up your shit and get out, someone will show you where to go move it. Anko yelled in a scary voice. She watched everyone leave the room, the leaf genin gave her a subtle smirk as they passed, they'd seen the real her. Her team was last, she made sure the others were clear, then smiled warmly at Naruto. Did you have fun Anko? Naruto said with a playful smile. You know I did brat now get out of here before you ruin my image. Anko said and smirked. Naruto glanced at Hinata and Tenten, reached up inside Anko's trench coat, grabbed her right breast through her mesh shirt, pulled her down, and gave her a quick kiss on the lips. Hi Anko-sensei. A smirking Naruto turned and walked out with his teammates, who were giggling quietly. The red-faced Anko turned to Ibiki as she pulled a kunai. Not one word Ibiki, don't you even fucking smirk or so help me, I'll give you a scar where it won't show. So 38 passed huh, you're slipping, but the next exam will thin him out. He didn't show it, but Ibiki was laughing on the inside at what Naruto had done to her, something he knew Anko would kill anyone else for doing. Shouldn't you be on your way already Anko? Ibiki said calmly and gave Anko a small smirk. A moment later Akumai flew past his head and stuck in the wall behind him, he didn't even flinch. You seem tense Anko you need to work off that stress with a good bar fight or maybe just get laid. Ibiki said casually. Anko took a quick deep breath and sighed. Understatement of the year but during the exams I can't afford to do either of those, especially the second one I don't do that anymore, and you know why. 
you're really going to wait two more years for him I'm proud of you Anko. Ibiki said seriously. Thanks Ibiki-san. Anko said, smiled and vanished in a swirl of wind and leaves. Ibiki smiled, Anko hadn't called him that since she was his apprentice. Outside, Naruto kun did you have to do that to Anko-chan? I know she's special to you, and I don't mind when we're alone, but Hinata said quietly. I know Hinata-chan. Naruto interrupted politely. Didn't you notice that Ibiki wasn't surprised I did that to Anko-chan? Naruto said quietly. Hinata stopped and thought a moment, then her eyes opened wider. He knows already so he's one of your. Naruto quickly put a finger on Hinata's lips to stop her and smiled. That's one of those secrets I can't tell you, but you're right that he is one of the people that's trained me. Hinata-chan, Tenten-chan, you know I hate keeping things from you, but I can't tell you everything yet. I told you about my special friend. Naruto said and glanced down at his stomach, so they knew he meant Kaiubi. For now that'll have to be enough, can you wait until we're married Hinata-chan, then I can tell you, Tenten-chan, and the rest of our friends everything. Hi, I'll always wait for you Naruto-kun. Hinata said happily. Me too Naruto-kun. Tenten said with a smile. Naruto hugged them both at once. That's why you're my best girls. Naruto said happily and gave them both a quick kiss on the cheek. Come on, if we're late for the next exam Anko will be mad. Naruto said and smirked. Outside training ground 44. Listen up maggots because I'm only gonna say this once. Welcome to training ground 44 or as we like to call it, the forest of death. Before you go in there are a few rules. First, you'll have to sign consent forms releasing Kanoha of all responsibility, should you happen to die. Each team will be given either an earth scroll or heaven scroll, you can't complete this exam without both scrolls, how you get a scroll you need from another team is up to you, I don't fucking care. However, you are not to open either scroll until you reach the tower, if you do we'll know, and your Hui team will be disqualified. Your goal is to reach the tower at the center within 5 days. You must get there in the allotted time, with both scrolls and all members of your team must be alive lose even one member, and you're disqualified. One more thing that isn't just a clever name, there are giant animals, insects, killer plants and dozens of other things living in there that would happy kill and eat you, so keep your eyes open at all times and stay alert. Not that I care, but I have to tell you that. Now get your asses over there, sign the consent forms, then pick up a scroll and head to the gate you're assigned move at maggots. Anko yelled fiercely and glared at them. I love this job. Sorry I can't help you Naruto-kun, Hinata-chan, Tenten-chan, but I've trained you as best I can in the year since I became your sensei. I hope it was enough protect your friends for me Naruto-kun, you guys are all my family, and I don't want to lose any of you. Anko thought. Naruto lead his team to the first booth, signed their forms, then Naruto picked up the earth scroll and headed to gate 13, where team 6 and 10 were already waiting, just as they got to the gate a rock team joined them. Hey guys Naruto said with a smile, then turned to the rock team. Good luck. Naruto said to them, being nice. We don't need luck squirt, but you and the other leaf wimps will need all you can get with little pussies like them around, especially that little bimbo. The biggest one said and then pointed to the busty little Riti directly in front of him. Did she cowered slightly and sniffled as her eyes teared up, then she turned away from the big rock nin. You shouldn't have said that. Sasuke said with a big sadistic smile. He'd interrupted Naruto before he acted. Why not, you going to do smithing about it pretty boy. The big rock nin said with a scowl. Not me him. Sasuke said and pointed over his shoulder with his right thumb. The big rock nin, with his two teammates, looked past the pretty boy and didn't see anyone then they heard a very deep growl, and a very heavily muscled bald kid stood up behind the girl and pretty boy. He was over six feet tall and very angry. Bull stepped past Sasuke and Chichi and got chest to face with the smaller rock nin that just insulted his village, his friends and worst of all his teammate Chichi. I'm only gonna ask once apologize to my friends or you won't even make it past the gate. The small remaining crowd of Genin stopped and watched, as did Anko and few others there. Oh fuck he must have insulted Chichi, that's the only thing that makes him that mad. Anko thought. Are you going to stop it? Asuma asked quietly from behind Anko. Anko just smiled sadistically. And miss a good fight. Besides, they've signed the consent forms, it doesn't specify they have to be inside the forest, it takes effect the moment they sign it, and you know that. Asuma sighed. Forgot who I was talking to. A moment later there was a loud crack, a crash, then two more crashes. Anko jumped off the stage and walked over to the rubble by the end of the stage, where a large crater now was. She looked down and saw the big rock nin sprawled out, a fist-like dent on what used to be a face, beside him, were what was left of his teammates, partially buried in the ground. She dropped in, checked for pulses and sighed. Are they okay? Naruto yelled from gate 13 almost 30 feet away. Which scroll do you have? Anko yelled. Earth. Sasuke yelled back, he didn't care if everyone knew, wanted them to try out and take his earth scroll. How ironic, they had the heaven scroll which is where they are now. Anko yelled back, picked it up and threw it to Sasuke, who caught it. K 
Congratulations, you guys got the first set of scrolls. Everyone hurry up and get your scrolls, and if you're smart you'll avoid the big guy. Everyone quickly rushed to get their scroll, and to their gate, a grass team was sent to gate 13, they didn't say a word to anyone, just gave a friendly nod. Begin. Anko yelled, then the huge gates opened slightly inward, so they could be pushed open and let everyone in. End chapter 7, minus 12 10 pm, forest of death, Naruto watched Hanada knock out her opponent, the last grass nin from their gate, with a Jayuken strike to the neck. Good work Hanada-chan, Tenten-chan. Hated to do this to them so soon, but they had the heaven scroll we needed, and they'll be able to walk out of here well, if something doesn't eat them while they're unconscious. Naruto said then laughed briefly and scanned the area. Since no one is watching how about we set a new record for finishing this exam? Naruto said with a big foxy grin. Hanada traded smiles with Tenten. Hi, sounds fun Naruto-kun, we rarely get to cut loose. Minutes later they were miles away, bounding from branch to branch at blinding speed, when Naruto signaled a stop, they landed next to him on the huge branch. Would you stop Naruto-kun, is something wrong? Tenten said as she put a hand on the weapon pouch on her right hip. Her only one as far as anyone could tell. Hi, we aren't alone. Naruto said seriously as he pulled the short short from under his shirt on his back and held it near his chest in his right hand. Tenten gasped quietly, that was a gift from Izara, formerly Zabuza Mamachi, for letting her and her daughter Seka, formerly Haku, live at his new house in the shinobi-only residential section of town he bought with part of the bounty he got from Mist. Hinata had a similar reaction, Naruto had told her he'd only use it in a serious battle, her Hinata gasped quietly. Naruto-kun, is he, here? Hinata asked nervously. When she saw Naruto nod Tenten swallowed nervously, there was only one person they referred to as he, Anko's former sensei Orochimaru. Hanada Chan, Tenten Chan, stay hidden and no matter what, don't get involved. He's way out of your league and I don't want either of you hurt. Naruto said seriously but with love, leaned to the side and gave Hinata then Tenten a quick kiss. Always remember that I love you both, and if anything happens take care of Anko Chan for me. Naruto said calmly, but with a hint of sadness, then before either could react he stood, ran down the side of the massive tree, and in seconds was out of sight. Tenten grabbed Hinata's shoulder when she moved to follow him. Don't go Hinata-chan, you know he's right, Naruto-kun has to do this alone, we just get in the way. Tenten said as her eyes teared up slightly. Besidus know how strong he really is, especially with Kentucky-san helping him. Tenten said and smiled. Hinata pushed down her emotions and smiled at Tenten. Hi, thank you Tenten-chan, but if anything happened to him before I even got to I'd just die. Hinata-chan do you think there's anything that could stop Naruto-kun from marrying you? Tenten asked seriously. Hinata thought a moment, then smiled broadly. No, Naruto-kun would move heaven and earth to be with me. Minus 200 feet below, on the ground, Naruto stood ready, a kunai in his left hand, his short sword with a slightly green-tinted blade he'd named Lucky Strike in his right hand. Come on out you snake bastard and face me or are you afraid? Naruto almost roared, just enough of Kaiubi's chakra released to form a red chakra tail behind him, his fingers and toes were clawed, his canines and whisker marks more pronounced, and his eyes were red with vertical slit pupils. Just then Orochimaru melted out of a nearby tree. Coo coo coo, aren't you the impatient one I didn't even get to play with your friends yet or the lovely things above us, they would be most entertaining. Hirachimaru said with a happy, sadistic grin. Naruto's chakra spiked and a second chakra tail formed. You leave them alone I won't warn you a second time. Naruto said in a cold, dead demonic voice, and released enough kai to freeze a high-level jounin in their tracks. Orochimaru just smiled. Kuku -ku Kaiu are quite interesting, this will be much more entertaining than last time, how's my old apprentice anyway, I've missed her. Orochimaru said calmly, the last line with a sickeningly sweet tone. The third red chakra tail formed behind Naruto as he grinned very darkly. Now I'm going to kill you. Naruto said calmly. Orochimaru laughed. Do you THNK you can kill me with only three tie Orochimaru said, then suddenly dodged to his left, his body bent at an impossible angle to avoid a slash that nearly took his head off. He twisted around, hissed and grabbed the right side of his neck that now had a quarter inch deep cut in it. You've improved I'll have to take you seriously it seems. He said then flashed through a series of hand signs, took a deep breath, a blew out a stram of fire that looked like a dragon. Naruto smiled and stood his ground. Foolish boy. Orochimaru said as it hit with a huge explosion of fire and smoke, a few seconds later it cleared and Naruto stood there with an amused smirk on his face. Hellfire Rasengan. Orochimaru heard from behind him as a burning pain erupted in his chest, a moment later red flames burned through his chest and spread throughout his body. A look of total disbelief on his face as he knew he was dead. This is for Anko. The five-tailed Naruto said a moment before his sword went through Orochimaru's neck and severed his head. 
Naruto flashed through a long series of hand signs, pointed his right palm at the severed head, and a blue fireball shot out and struck it, engulfing it in blue flames for several seconds before it dispelled. He picked up the still intact head and watched the body burn to nothing, the only thing left was the still flawless sword known as Grass Cutter. He looked at the special demon seal now on Orochimaru's forehead and smiled as he returned to normal, your head may be intact, but only Kami could bring your sick ass back, and I seriously doubt she will. Burn in hell bastard. Naruto said, took a blank scroll from his pocket, opened it on the ground, sat the head next to the sword, did several hand signs and touched the scroll. Seal. Naruto said, the head and sword vanished in a puff of smoke, and Teo Kanji appeared on the scroll. Naruto smiled, rolled it up and put it back in his pocket. Up in the tree Hinata sat nervously next to Tenten. Do you think he won Tenten-chan? Hinata said a little worried. Of course I won, he never had a chance. Naruto said from behind them. Hinata and Tenten jumped up and spun around, saw a smiling, unhurt Naruto, and both glumped him hard. Naruto caught them, spun and landed on his back, on the branch, instead of falling off it. He waited a minute while they covered his face with kisses. As much fun as this is having you two lay on me, we should get going. Naruto said with a huge smile. Hinata pouted very cutely. Hi Mini-sama. Denton giggled and stood up. Mini-sama very funny Hinata-chan. Naruto said dryly and stuck out his tongue at her. You're lucky you're so cute. Hinata just smiled cutely. Hi. I want to make sure all our friends pass. Naruto said and made the cross finger sign. Multi-shadow, clone jutsu. Naruto said and 30 shadow clones appeared on the branches around them, nodded and all leapt off in different directions. Now let's go. Naruto said, gave a short sigh, smirked, kissed Hinata, turned and leapt off the branch to the next tree, Hinata and Tenten close behind giggling quietly. Minus 12.59 p.m., Forest of Death Tower. Naruto, Hinata to his right, Tenten to his left, kneeled on the stone floor in front of the giant wall scroll and opened both scrolls. When they started to smoke he stepped back, then a moment later there was a quiet poof, then the smoke cleared and revealed Iruka with a huge smile on his face. You just set a new record for this exam 59 minutes, I'm very proud of all of you. Iruka said happily, but it didn't last when he saw Naruto's face. What happened? His face calm, Naruto stepped up to his former teacher, took a scroll from his pocket and handed it to him. Take this to Suratobi sama give it to him and have him open it, Anko should be there when he does. Naruto said calmly, stepped back and gave Iruka a full bow, joined by Hinata and Tenten. Thanks Iruka-sensei join me for Raymond at Ichirakus after the exams. Iruka took the scroll, smiled proudly when he bowed to him. Hi. Go get a room and relax, there's food, baths, anything you want on the first four floors. Iruka said, nodded and vanished in a swirk of wind and leaves. Somewhere in the forest of death, I said shut up, Arachimaru-sama put me in charge because unlike you two I can stay calm and not mess everything up by losing my temper. We're going to find that blonde kid, but until we do we have to play along, and that means getting the other scroll. They have the heaven scroll we need, so unless you want to tell Orochimaru-sama why we failed, she said and waited a moment. We'll do a kin. Both men said nervously. Hin smiled. Good, besides it'll be fun, and whatever's left of the two little bimbos you can have, I just don't want to hear about it. I might torture and kill them, but I am a woman, so keep that in mind you perverts, or you'll find out what my senbin can do to your manhood. Kin said, the last part coldly, then signaled them to follow her out into the clearing. Hidden in a nearby tree and Naruto clone listened to the three sound nin. If they think Sakura-chan and Ino-chan are weak, they're in for a big surprise, and if I know Shikamaru he's already set up a few. Just then there was a big crash, followed immediately by a crunching thuds and screams. The Naruto clone looked at the edge of the clearing where Kin now stood alone, and fairly shocked, her two male teammates had stopped the first trap, but they didn't know Shikamaru, no one planned traps like he did, one of his backups had killed both of the male sound nin. He watched Kin take on Ino and Sakura, she'd done pretty well until she made a crack about Sakura's forehead. Naruto winced in fear, he knew Sakura very well, and unless you were a close friend there were two things you never did. You never made fun of her small breasts, and if you ever wanted to have kids one day you never ever made fun of her forehead. The second Kin had said it, he saw Ino pale and start to back up, Shikamaru shook his head, and he just made out what his lazy friend said. You just made the worst mistake of your life lady. Shikamaru said calmly. As she woke, she realized she was in a stone room. You'd be dead if it wasn't for me Kin. A young male voice said. Kin turned her head towards the unknown male voice and got scared when she recognized him. Naruto Uzumaki Okami, are you going to kill me? Naruto looked at her coldly. I should for trying to kill my friends and for what you said about Sakura-chan, but what she did will do for now is punishment. You're lucky she's also a great med nin, because I convinced her to repair most of the damage she did, don't make me regret showing you mercy. You can't feel any pain because a friend of mine is a high uga, she temporarily blocked all feeling in that part of your body. 
On that table there is some medication that will do the same thing. I'm only going to make this offer once, so think before you answer, because if you refuse, then change your mind at the last second it won't save you. I know you served Orochimaru he's dead now, I killed him about an hour ago. Naruto said emotionlessly and got the reaction he expected from her, shock and disbelief. If you agree to tell me what he had planned besides abusing me, I can arrange for you to join Leaf as a Kinoichi, well you'll be a civilian for a while, but you could become a Kinoichi if you behave yourself. Naruto said calmly, then gave her a small sly smile. So do you want friends and a future, or should I just torture the information from you and kill you? Naruto said calmly then pulled out his short sword and looked at the blade. Gin tried to move but couldn't even wiggle a finger. Oh Kami this can't be happening but it is. If he really killed Orich Marusama I don't have a fucking prayer against him. If he's even twice as strong as Pinky he could rip me apart with his bare hands, and if he chose to rape me, even if I could move Kin thought Naruto Sam before I answer, may I ask I know you said she healed most of the damage, but will I be able to enjoy sex, or did Pink Sakura ruin me? I've never been hit so hard in my life especially not there. Naruto looked into her eyes and saw what he'd hoped for. Thanks for the training Abiki. Naruto thought. Hi, you will, the damage was bad, but she repaired most of it. Assuming you're still alive later, I'll have you taken to the hospital for treatment, then you'll need somewhere to live, I can think of a few friends that'll house you, even be your friend if you're nice you're how old. I'm 18 Naruto-sama. Kin said right away. Do you prefer men or women? Naruto asked casually. Kin was a little shocked he'd ask her that, but considering her situation. I prefer men, but I have been with a few women. Kin said then had a thought. If you want to know, my breasts are full firm D cups. Kin said, trying to anticipate where his questions were going. I accept your terms and humbly surrender myself to you as a servant if you'll have me. Naruto didn't show it, but he'd expected this reaction. He'd noticed, especially in the last year, that girls, and especially women, reacted this way to him more frequently, now that he knew what it meant. If you mean it we could be friends, and more in a few years, but if you betray me or Kanoha I'll skin you alive bitch. Naruto said the first part, Kai would be the last part and changed Naruto's eyes to red as he did. Impaled and nodded submissively. She'd been told he was a Jinchuriki, but that was her first personal contact with a demon. Naruto went to the door and opened it, a moment later two female Mednins walked in and smiled at him as they passed, followed by Kurunai Uhishi agreed to tell us what she knows and defect to leave, does he want to see me? Kurunai smiled. Hi, Naruto-kun. Hokage-sama is in the fifth floor office, with Anko-chan. Thank you Kurunai-chan, don't hurt her too much. Naruto said then gave Kurunai a quick kiss in the lips and vanished in a puff of smoke, he was a shadow clone. Kin said, amazed. Hi so relax, if you don't resist this Jinjutsu won't hurt, this is the fastest way to find out what you know if you cooperate anyway. You don't want our head interrogator to question you, so relax and open your mind. If you do try anything I'll wipe your personality and leave you a mindless slave. Gurunai said seriously then started a series of hand signs as she stopped next to the table by Kin's head. Forest of Death Tower, 5th floor office. The real Naruto knocked on the double doors and waited a moment for permission to enter. When he heard Suratobi's voice he took a deep breath, let it out slowly and went in. The instant he did he saw the old man sitting calmly behind a desk smoking his pipe, but to his right of the old man stood Anko, she had a huge smile on her face, he knew she couldn't hold in if her life depended on it, and her whole body was twitching from unbridled joy. As he walked to the chair in front of the desk to sit down, he knew it was taking every ounce of willpower Anko had to not rip off her clothes and his and ravage him right there on the floor like the women in Jiraiya's books. He sat in the chair. You wanted to see me old man this is about him, I guess. Naruto said politely. Tsuritobi sighed with amusement as he blew out a plume of smoke. Naruto, Anko and two of his former students were the only people he ever let call him old man, but Naruto was the only one that did it in front of people, but he did sort of raise Naruto who thought of him like a grandfather, so he allowed it. He even liked it a little, but he wasn't going to tell anyone that. Hi. It pains me it had to be done, and that I didn't stop him when I had the chance of it I want to thank you Naruto. Suratobi said solemnly. Anko remain where you are, I understand how you're feeling, but you will remember you are a respected jounin, do not embarrass yourself or Kanoha by letting your emotions control you. Naruto, please tell me what that seal on his forehead does, I assume you put it there. Suratobi said seriously. Anko suppressed her emotions a little, but not enough to stop herself from shaking slightly she was so happy. Naruto nodded, then glanced at Anko and smirked. Before I do can Anko-chan hug me, it'll help her get her emotions under control. Saratobi thought a moment, smirked subtly and nodded. Anko ran around the desk to Naruto, who stood just in time for her to scoop him up in a monster hug and spin him around the room for a minute. When she stopped she covered his cheeks with kisses. 
In her 22 years she'd never been so happy, the pain and blinding rage she'd carried around since she was 10 years old was finally gone, Orochimaru was dead she was free. Anko put Naruto down and yanked down the left side of her trench coat collar to show her bare neck. It's gone Naruto-kun. When you killed him his seal was broken I'm free. Anko squealed like a little girl as she almost bounced on her toes. From now on Anko Midarashi is Naruto Uzumaki's most loyal bitch, and I don't care who knows. Anko declared proudly. Tsuritobi sighed and shook his head, he knew she was serious, and even he couldn't stop her. Anko Midarashi. He said with authority to get Anko's attention. I'd prefer you didn't do that, but short of locking you in a cell I can't stop you, so I'm asking you to keep your first promise to wait until Naruto and Hinata are married. As to telling the village you belong to Naruto could you at least wait until after the Chuenin exams are over. Anko looked at Naruto a moment, then pouted slightly. Hi, for you and Naruto-kun I'll wait to tell Irian, and will keep my first promise. Thank you Anko. Now Naruto, I understand that you captured a sound nin that was defeated by Sakura Haruno, and that Kurenai is interrogating her now. Before she debriefs me on what she learned, tell me about the seal. Saratobi said calmly, but inside he was smiling. He'd heard about Sakura's special attack, as the best Mednin of her age group, and the physically strongest Kanoichi in that year's class, she'd combined them to create a truly devastating Tejutsu attack. He knew most of the Leaf Shinobi knew about it, but few had seen her use it. I will be actually placed the seal, but he told me what it does. It will prevent anyone from learning anything from his head using Jutsu or any other method. It's an ancient demon seal, only Kaiwubi can break it since he placed it. It will also prevent anyone from bringing him back, not that he could anyway, Kami has his soul locked up, even if his body was restored somehow, he'll never live again. That's the best explanation I can give, it's all way too complicated for any human to understand that's what Kaiwubi told me anyway. What you do with the sword and his head is up to you as Hokage, I already destroyed his body with a fire jutsu as I was taught to do. Naruto said. Thank you Naruto you're both dismissed. Saratobi said calmly and took a puff on his pipe. After they left he leaned back in the chair, closed his eyes and went deep into thought while he waited for Kurenai's report and chapter 8, July 21, 7.56 am, underground arena. Naruto looked around with a smile, of the 27 teams that started the forest of death, the leaf team 6 through 10 made it, as well as the team from Suna, one from grass and one from rock. He hadn't told any of his friends except Hanada and Tenten, but after Kin had told Kurenai everything she knew about the invasion, which was limited, but enough to alert the Jounin to watch for, he'd been assigned to watch the team from Suna, that he now knew were the sand siblings from what the old man told him. Naruto told him about Gera, but to avoid tipping them off and give him a chance to help a fellow Jinchuriki, instead of having to kill him, he'd been assigned to personally handle Gera if Shukaku appeared. He glanced up at Saratobi in his seat above the arena and saw Saratobi give him a subtle nod. Good, they're ready, I just wish Kin knew when it was planned for. Naruto thought as he lined up for the rules he figured were coming, and probably a speech he knew the old man liked to make. Anada looked to her right when she heard an amused chuckle. What's so funny Naruto-kun? He's probably gonna give us a speech. Naruto said with a big smirk. After the rules were explained, Saratobi did give a short speech, the proctor revealed and activated the board on the wall, it ran through everyone's name in the two slots. Rock Lee vs Kankiru. Everyone went up to the catwalk, Leaf Nin on the right, Grass and Rock on the left, the Suna team on the center left, except for Rock Lee and Kankiru who stayed in the arena. Naruto leaned on the rail to watch, Hinata to his left, Tenten to his right, Anko was leaning against the wall behind him with Kakashi, Guy, Kurenai and Itachi. What do you think? Naruto asked casually. Depends on what that guy has in the bundle. Tenten said seriously as she studied him. He's your teammate, do you think Lee Kun can beat him Niji Niasen? Hinata asked calmly. Niji stepped up to the rail next to Hinata but didn't lean on it. Hi, Hinata-sama, Lee will beat him easily. Niji said in a calm, respectful tone. Hinata smiled. Good, Lee Kun is a really nice person, I'd hate to see him get hurt. Naruto was about to say something when Jeki coughed and signaled them to begin. He watched Lee run in very fast for a genin with a leaf hurricane that missed, but followed it with a straight left that hit Kankiru in the chest and knocked him back skidding 15 feet and frowned. He's holding back too much, he's supposed to impress the judges so they promote him, he won't do it like that. Naruto said almost disappointed. I agree, but you know how he is. Niji said calmly. Stop playing with him Lee and finish it. Naruto yelled. Everyone not from Leaf looked at Naruto annoyed, then Rock Lee curiously. Lee looked up into the catwalk. Can I guy sensei? Lee asked with his usual excitement, and when guy nodded, he gave one of his familiar blinding smiles. I am sorry for what I must do to you, please forgive me. Lee said seriously and gave Kankiru a polite bow. Kankiru stood up straight, amused and confused. Is this guy serious? He thinks he's about to kick my ass and he apologizes first. 
but Lee vanished everyone gasped in surprise, then he appeared in front of Kankiru as he landed a left hook to the body that folded him in half, followed it with a right uppercut that straightened him out and lifted him almost a foot off the ground and finished with a leaf hurricane that knocked Kankiru across the arena where he slammed into the wall with a crash, then collapsed face down unconscious. Off winner, Rock Lee. Jackie said. Damari stared down at her brother slightly shocked and stunned. He was playing with him and did that these leaf genin may be a lot stronger than we thought, and if the rest are like him, we're in trouble Tamari thought nervously, then glanced at her youngest brother and wasn't surprised at all he didn't seem to care his big brother may be seriously injured. She watched the green spandex clad kid with the bowl cut and big eyebrows return to his friends while her brother was carried off my medics. Tamari vs Hanada Hayuga, if you lose I'll give you to mother. Gira said in his dead voice. Damari cringed visibly, jumped the rail, opened her fan and glided down on it to her spot on the ground, then folded it back and stood it on end with a hand on top. Damari glanced up at the other catwalk and saw her opponent having a talk with the blonde kid she met five days ago. Ah, so she's my opponent, if what they said is right, I better not let her get near me, if she blocks my chakra I'm screwed big time. Tamari thought, glanced up at Gara and swallowed nervously. Anada held in her giggle at what Naruto had just whispered in her ear as she leaned back with a slight blush, nodded and headed for the stairs to the arena floor. Anko stepped up and took Hinata's place leaning on the rail. What did you tell her Naruto-kun? Anko asked quietly, but didn't mind the Tenten and Niji also heard her. Anko's eyes opened wider for just an instant when Naruto whispered it in her ear, then smirked slyly. You lil shit this is gonna be good. Tenten-chan, you'll want to watch this match closely and keep an eye on Tamari. Anko said quietly. Especially with what Hinata-chan is gonna do to her. I almost feel sorry for her 18 years in that family, probably never even kissed anyone now this is going to happen. Anko thought. Tenten glanced at Anko, nodded, then saw the familiar but oh-so-subtle smirk on her face, then saw the look on Naruto's face and knew something fun was gonna happen. She'd had more poker games and prank wars with Naruto, Hinata and Anko in the last year that she could remember, knew those looks well and what they meant. She watched Hanada walk out to her place and get in her Jayuken stance, when the proctor signaled them to start Tamari opened her giant fan and swung it, a moment later she felt a strong wind and saw Hanada's hair whip back, but she didn't move otherwise. She had to nudge Naruto with her elbow and smile, thanks to him they'd learned to water walk already, and Hinata's control was practically perfect, only Naruto and Sakura were as good. She knew Tamari would have to hit Hinata with hurricane force winds to knock her out of her Jayuken stance. It was subtle, but she saw wave after wave of wind crash into Hinata with no effect and noticed the front of Hinata's jacket wasn't flattening against her chest and outlining her huge breasts, she was using her chakra to anchor herself and stiffen her jacket to hide her figure when she saw Hinata's feet shift slightly. This is about over, Hinata-chan is ready. Tenten said and smiled happily. Damari was really frustrated, she'd hit the Hayuga girl with everything short of her few lethal attacks, she couldn't figure why that small girl wasn't blown away or hadn't attacked. Fine, but you asked for it. Damari yelled annoyed, then stopped her wind barrage for just a brief moment to launch one her fatal wind jutsu, when the girl vanished in a blur of incredible speed she couldn't fall the next thing she knew the Hayuga girl was face to face with her, and an instant later, she's flying through the air head first without a fan. She didn't panic though, extended her arms and legs, reached out with her chakra, turned and landed on her feet in a crouch at what she quickly calculated as 21 feet from her original position, and stood with a confident smirk as she looked at the smaller Hayuga girl. Not bad little girl, but you can't beat Tamari said confidently, almost arrogantly, then she saw the girl's hands as she raised them, and the whistles started to register in her ears. She paled as she hoped no, prayed she wasn't seeing what she thought she was in the girl's hands. Over here Tamari. She heard a girl say from behind and above her, turned around and looked up. It was the other girl with the cute blonde kid. After she's yelled out and Tamari turned toward her, Tenten got a huge smile on her face. Nobody has faster or more nimble hands than Hinata-chan except Naruto-kun. Tenten thought. He why Tamari, you seem to have lost your shirt and that sports bra you had on is for girls with B and C cups, not big melons like yours. What are you an E cup? Tenten yelled with a slight hint of lust in her voice. If she hadn't seen Hinata's huge breasts dozens of times already she knew she would have fainted with a severe nosebleed already. Damari spun back around facing Hinata, her firm, round E-cup breasts shook side to side like fighting puppies when she stopped and saw Hinata standing there with a big smile on her face, her shirt in her right hand, her sports bra she wore to compress and hide them was hanging from her left. Damari threw her arms around he bare chest, her entire upper body, including her arms, blushed neon red, and she dropped to the ground in a tight ball to hide her chest, she'd been totally, utterly humiliated to her very core. I submit. Tamari squeaked out as best she could. In his seat, Suratobi had to use every ounce of willpower he had to stay conscious, he couldn't afford to faint in front of this crowd. 
Kami, give me strength. He prayed. Uh, Hinata wins. The proctor said, still stunned by what he just saw. Hinata ran across the arena and helped Tamari up as she covered her chest with her shirt, then escorted Tamari out the door to the back where the med center and recovery rooms were. Niji Hayuga vs Fuki, I submit. Fuki yelled from the catwalk immediately. After what she just saw, there was no way in hell she was getting in there. I'm not a big as Tamari, but I'm not showing my to everyone well, except Kiba Kun if he wanted to see them. Fuki thought and glanced at her teammate Kiba, Niji sighed. I had no idea Hinata-sama was capable of such an act, but I would not do such a thing to you Fuki-chan. Niji said seriously. Hiyashi-sama and father are going to shit when they find out what Hinata-sama did, I must admit though, I didn't know she could move that fast, and her hand speed and dexterity were incredible, she's probably faster than me, and such skill. Niji thought, both very impressed and humbled, but he knew it had to be Naruto's influence, he was why she was so strong. I'm most impressed Anko-san, Naruto-san. Recovery room 2, underground arena. Hinata sat on the side of the bed next to Tamari who was curled up under the blankets crying from what she'd said was the most humiliating experience of her life, and she'd caused it. She really felt bad about what she'd done now, after Tamari had briefly told her only her family doctor, an older woman, had ever seen her nude, and even that was a little embarrassing for her. She knew Tamari was the enemy the older San Kinoichi, despite her bitch attitude, Hinata could tell that deep down Tamari was as shy and gentle as she used to be. I'm sorry Tamari I Hinata said apologetically. I'm dead Tamari interrupted between sobs. No one is going to Hinata said to comfort the older girl. No, you don't understand. Tamari yelled as she sat up, the blankets held over her chest, even though she had her sports bra and shirt back on. I'm not afraid of you it's Gara he told me if I lost he'd kill me. Would he really do that? Hinata asked, a little shocked. You don't know him like I do he he's also my little brother and Ina Tamari said, almost too terrified to even say it. Hinata swallowed nervously, she had a good idea what Tamari wanted to tell her. He has Shukaku the one-tailed raccoon demon sealed inside him. Hinata said nervously. Tamari looked at her amazed. You you know what he is? How? Tamari said, totally shocked. Naruto-kun figured it out that day we met you, that's why he wasn't afraid of Gara. Hinata said calmly and gently. Tamari's sharp mind kicked into high gear. She'd never thought about it before and probably never would have the fall of that hadn't happened. She thought about everything she'd ever heard or read about Konoha, then a name popped into her head, and suddenly everything clicked. Naruto has the nymph. Tamari said. The moment Tamari spoke she knew what she was going to say in gently, but very quickly clapped her right hand over Tamari's mouth. Don't say it, that's an S-rank secret, and you can be executed for just saying it. Hinata said seriously as she looked into Tamari's eyes. Tamari nodded she understood, and a moment later Hinata removed her hand. She thought about her words carefully. So I'm right and you know. Tamari asked cautiously, and was only a little surprised when Hinata nodded. But you aren't afraid of him, and no one else in Kanoha seems to be either, do they know? The Jounin and some of his friends do, like Tenten Chan she's the other girl with Naruto-kun, the one that called to you after I Hinata said, then looked down a little ashamed. There's one more thing if Gara tries to to kill any of our friends Naruto will kill him, he has orders from Hokage-sama, and we know you're allied with Sound and are planning to invade us, we just don't know when. If you hurt me for what I did or to escape, please don't, Naruto-kun will kill you we're betrothed. Hinata said calmly, her gaze never left her lap. Tamari flopped back on the bed, pale and very scared. She laid there in silence for almost five minutes, then sat up, her face solemn. He may be a monster and psychotic killer, but Gara is my baby brother, him, and Kankiru are my only family now, Orochimaru killed my father the Kazakiage and took his place. I'm not supposed to know that, but I noticed a change in his personality, I hated him as a person and my father and won't miss him, but I don't want to lose any more family. Can Naruto beat Gara without killing him? Gara is obsessed with finding someone worth fighting to prove his existence means something, I think that if Naruto can defeat him, I can find my brother under all that hatred and sadness and save him. Tamari said sincerely, pulled off the blankets, slipped past Hanada onto the floor, and kneeled to her in submission. Please, I'm begging you if Naruto can't save my little brother I'll do anything I'll betray Suna and Orochimaru, I'll defect to Konoha, go to prison, I'll even be Naruto's slave and give myself to him, to you, to the short girl with her hair and buns just please, convince Naruto to save my baby brother. Tamari said sadly but sincerely and started to cry again. Most of who she was as a woman and a noichi had been ripped away in the arena, her mind was desperately grabbing anything to rebuild itself, she needed order and structure in her life, and she saw Naruto as her best chance for that. She doesn't know Orchimaru is dead. Hinata thought, stunned by what Tamari just said, Ab she read from Tamari's body language, back in the arena, give up Shikamaru, you can't hurt me. Bull bellowed. You're right and this is too much work, I give up. Shikamaru said in his usual tired tone. The winner bull. 
The proctor said, slightly stunned. You lazy jerk. Sakura and Ino angrily yelled at him in unison. Shikamaru just shrugged. You're lucky bull, I have to deal with a men Kurinai sensei all day long, then deal with my mom who's worse than all three combined women are so troublesome. Bull just chuckled and followed Shikamaru back up the stairs to the catwalk. Kurinai stepped up behind Sakura and Ino. Leave him alone you two, you know the basic Kinjutsu he knows wouldn't work on someone like Bull, and there's no way he was going to do anything that might kill him. He did his best and I'm proud of him, even if he is the laziest person I've ever met, he's smarter than the three of us put together, someday he's going to save our asses with that incredible mind of his. You'd both die to save his lazy butt, and you know it. Sakura traded glances with Ino, gave her a subtle nod and sighed. Hi, Kurinai sensei He's a lazy, good for nothing, but we do like him despite that, and he is our teammate. Sakura said softly. Shikamaru finally reached his teammates and sensei, stopped and waited for the verbal beating, instead of yelling they both kissed him, one on each cheek, and congratulated him on a great match. Everyone around him laughed when Shikamaru blushed, slightly stunned and confused. I'll never figure women out, Tamari might be my type though. Ino Yamanaka vs Kiba and Yuzuka. Ino gave Sakura and Kurinai a devious, sly smile. I'll be right back. Then turned and headed for the stairs. Sakura, you know Ino better than most, is she going to do what I think she is? Kurinai said with a small smirk. Sakura just smiled, amused. Hi, she is Kurinai sensei. Sakura said calmly. In the arena Kiba had just jumped down and was waiting for Ino, Akamaru to his left. He squatted down and rubbed the white puppy's head. Okay Akamaru, now we get to pay her back for teasing us all those years. She's still our friend so don't hurt her too bad, we want her humiliated, not dead. Kiba told him quietly. Akamaru barked his agreement. Since Kiba had his back to their friends, she took the spot facing them and waved, mainly at Naruto. Though she still joked with them about stealing Naruto from Hinata, she'd long since stopped actually trying to do it, it had become a fun game she played with Hinata when they were out eating, shopping or at a sleepover. Ino watched Kiba just over 20 feet away, and instead of her fighting stance stood there, feet shoulder width apart, hands on hips, chest out and smiling. When the proctor told them to begin she watched Kiba do his clone jutsu and turn Akamaru into his clone, then the all fours jutsu and charge in. This is too easy. Ino thought. She knew she couldn't match his speed or strength, only a couple people had as much stamina as him, so she went after his weakness, namely his biggest one she knew she could best exploit, she waited until they got about 10 feet away, and as fast as she could yanked up her purple shirt, she wasn't wearing anything under it as usual. Both Kibas froze dead in their tracks, she sat her shirt on the top of her breasts, walked up to them, stood both with a hand under their chin, and once they were standing straight enough she reached down low, grabbed both Kibas by the balls, and squeezed really hard for about 10 seconds before she released them. They collapsed to the gruend, out cold, Akamaru changed back to himself after he hit the ground. Ino pulled down her shirt and looked at the proctor with a big smile. Well don't keep a girl waiting. A winner, Ino Yamanaka. The proctor said, winced slightly and coughed. Ino walked back to the catwalk while medics came out and took Kiba and Akamaru to the back for a quick checkup. Ino stopped next to Tenten, all her friends and the Jounin staring at her with smiles and or shock. Don't act so surprised I did that, I've been teasing everyone since I got him, I just figured it was time I show it him. Besides, I didn't want to be outdone by Hinata and some sand Kanoichi. I'm top diva around here and don't you guys forget it. Ino said proudly. The rest I owed him for accusing me of stuffing, I told him he'd regret it for not apologizing. Before she could walk away Tenten took Ino's arm and pulled her close. That was incredible Ino-chan I'd love to have a private show, if you're interested. Tenten whispered in her ear seductively. Ino looked Tenten in the eyes and gave her a left eye wink, no one would see I'd love to Ten-chan Ino subtly whispered, so only Tenten would hear her or know she said anything. Thank you Tenten. Ino said happily to a smiling Tenten, then walked past everyone to Sakura and Kurinai. Naruto, like every other guy there, made a mental note about Ino and pushed the thought aside. He subtly glanced at Hinata and Anko as he motioned subtly with his head to Tenten. When he saw them subtly smirk back he knew they were thinking the same thing he was now Tenten had finally made the first move, and Ino accepted. It's about time. Naruto thought happily. End chapter 9. What if neglected Naruto gets a bloodline from Kami? Thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.